it's me, Jess. Welcome Ooh. to my channel. And today we are doing a lovely, juicy reading on what is this person saying about you and why. So I've got three piles here. Pile number one, pile number two, pile number three. I will put the picture up so that you can meditate on it. Allow yourself be drawn into whatever pile or piles you're drawn to. And I will see you at your reading. does this person say about you? Well, this person may not be saying things about you. They also could be saying something here about you, but they think an awful lot about you here, pile number one. They just, they can't quite place you. You are confusing to this person. You don't exactly make sense to them. So if this person is talking to somebody about you, which I want to remind you that is not a given, um, I feel like it would be one person and it could be somebody like a therapist um, or somebody from like a work environment that they 
that helps them like process through their feelings and understand certain things. It also could be somebody that works in an earthy arena, maybe real estate or um, something like that, that again, they, they trust and they talk with before they, when they realize something here needs to change. Now, the biggest thing though, like when they're talking about you, I do feel like there's a certain amount of judgment and um, condescension and it's because you're different. You don't make sense here to this person. You're different than this person, first of all. You're different than the people that they have met before and that they're usually around and that they have regular conversations with. And um, so this person can't quite process you and that is actually causing quite a bit of frustration. But I feel like spirit and your this person's guides really have petitioned your guides um, to bring you two together in order to allow you to be run through this person's system. And I'm hearing like a kidney stone, like you will pass like a kidney stone here for this person because this person is incredibly, incredibly stubborn. Now this person that you're asking about, I also feel like they are realizing or at least that's how you kind of come into this whole equation is this person is in the process of realizing that something here does need to change. And whatever this change is, it's in an earthy kind of a way. And I find this part to be like really fascinating here about your person because this could be like a change of house or like a change of location. It could be a change of career, but whatever this is, it's like there's something here that is deeply settled and it's made this person rigid, immovable, inflexible, and very stubborn in terms of their mind. And there is a direct link here between some kind of a location of a place and how long this person has been there and the fact that they are now rigid, immovable, and inflexible here in their mind. They, they don't know how to process different kinds of people, places, and things. And that's a real problem here for this person um, in terms of their own spiritual goals and their own spiritual learning. And for their guides in particular, they're kind of throwing their hands up and saying, we can't really help this person if they're going to um, stay like so stubborn and so stuck. And so that's where you really do come in here to this person's story pile. Number one is because you, I'm, you know, like this person is like, thinking about you, but it's very mechanistic thinking. And and what this person likes to do when it's not working with you, which is causing all this confusion and frustration, and just to keep bringing this back to the title of the reading, that's what this person's talking about. Their frustration, their confusion, their distrust. Um, and they kind of, this is reminding me of pile number two in the last reading that we did um, here on the channel was Their Hidden Feelings. And if you haven't watched that one, you might wanna watch that one and um, check pile number two, um, because I do feel like there's a strong correspondence where this person's hidden feelings are that they are disapproving and distrustful here of you. And that's what they're talking about, again, with like one person. And it is in a very processing kind of a manner. Although I do feel like this person puts down your energy. They make snap judgments here about you because what this person is used to doing, and it's part of what makes them so rigid, but um, to be fair, this is a very human thing, is they rush to put people in clusters in, and they want to cluster certain traits, you know, which is a normal thing. That That is kind of like a normal thing because keep in mind our brains are the most energy intensive aspect of our entire body and our brains love a good shortcut. So they want to kind of cluster similar things together, similar experiences, um, similar traits, you know, and then shove people, places, and things into those groups, into those categories, because it's a, it's a shortcut. It's a calorie saving maneuver where you don't actually have to interact with the person, place, or thing that's actually living and breathing and ever changing and always interesting and unique in front of you you just relate to the category and said you can make inferences here about people and, and what they're going to respond. And you know, some people are better at doing this than others. And there's situations where that's more or less appropriate, right? Cause you can see how that could very easily lend itself to prejudices and snap judgments here about people. And I feel like that's what is happening here with this person but it might not be happening in like overt or obvious ways here with this person where this person may not be so rigid that they believe all women are this way and all men are that way or you know something like big like ra different races have different categories and traits and that people aren't you know just humans so I don't, I don't think it's like that overt here with this person, but table resonates. It very well could be. So this person is having to process your energy and they don't quite know what to make of it. Um, and I think that, um, this person is saying that they don't know what to make of it. They are saying that they couldn't really read you here in the past. Like maybe they were very confused or, um, like your energy was kind of distorted here in the past. They could have even thought that you were like meeker or mild or more tender or something like than you actually were. But then there's been some kind of gnosis, some kind of like knowledge um, that 
Okay, so no, this word gnosis, I feel like this is gonna be different depending on what your situation is here with this person. It could have been that there was some kind of knowledge um, revealed and I kind of wanna say that um, this person could have felt like there was some kind of knowledge that was revealed through overhearing you talking with your friends. So just a heads up on that. I don't know how this person will be doing that, but they could have just been like kind of maybe eavesdropping here and your friend group and this person's friend group are very, very different. So I think some of the ideas and the perspectives and stuff that you guys were talking about batting around there between each other, your perspectives, it's not what this person is used to. And I feel like that's kind of what has um, brought up the distrust or um, like the, this person has a need to feel superior to you. And I don't exactly like that um, coming off their energy. I'm not going to lie. Um, Cause I do feel like this person has like a, it's hidden. And I think you thought this person was going to be some kind of fulfillment here for you. And I don't know, it doesn't have to be romantic. Um, but I feel like you, when you met this person at first, you could have felt like, oh, thank God, you know, or I've been looking for um, this person. It even could have like work related. You know, I've been looking for um, this kind of an assistant or this kind of a client or this kind of a practitioner or something like that. Like, oh my gosh, it's a wish fulfillment. But then come to find out this person's like arrogant and entitled. Um, Cause I'm almost getting like, you rub the lamp. And then this person was like, what? <laughs> and you were like, whoa, okay, never mind. Um, I thought this was gonna be a little, little friendlier experience, you know, or something like that. Um, anyway, so going back to like this gnosis energy, because that's something here that this person a like talks about either within their own brain to themselves, um, or with like I said, a therapist or a work associate or somebody who they go to when they talk, they're talking about how something does need to change here. So um, they could have had some kind of like gnosis is deep knowledge, right? So it's like, it could have been some kind of deep knowledge that changed or transformed something. They might feel that you have some kind of a deep knowledge here on something, some, some kind of a topic. And with Pisces being here, it might be spirituality. It could also have to do with like um, a humanity, like Pisces for me is a very community based um um, situation. So like, especially how to like nourish a certain community, it very well could be like, maybe you work with children or something like that. So, um, it could be as broad or as specific as your situation, you know, allows for, but I feel like this person, um, they also could be thinking about some kind of a new beginning here that you've had where you have come out of your shell here, or again, maybe they've noticed this here with your friends, because another thing that I feel like this person does not quite understand, and they're, what's bothering me about this is I feel like they're categorizing it as if you are like two-faced or something like that. That's not what I'm getting from your energy here, and I'll explain that in just a second, but they they could have witnessed parts of you that you don't trust them with as a person. That's not the kind of relationship that you have because look at this. <laughs> Again, you rubbed the lamp and it was like, what? And you were like, um, never mind, you know? So it, it's just, you're different around your people. You're the people that you love, the people that you trust. That's like a very, again, a very human kind of a thing. Um, and I am wondering, there is something about this person not quite understanding, like, what is very natural and normal and human. And I do feel like this person um, lives on some kind of an elevated plane. So maybe they have certain gifts, skills, or talents that might be being over relied upon here, certain position here that's being over relied upon here. Um, this person's not really uh, factoring in that whatever knowledge, skills, or um, like superior position they have could be altering the way that their traditional friend group interacts with them. So while they were overhearing you, giving them a different kind of perspective on things, I think it's really got them, it's gotta be in their bonnet is what I gotta say. Like, And I think this is a healthy experience, although passing like a kidney stone kind of suggests to me that it's not exactly comfortable here for this person. And they're agitated and they're frustrated. And I do feel like this person then projects that on you as though you're the cause of their of their frustration, even though it's like you're the remedy. I kind of feel like you are the remedy. And that's a song that might um, tie in here with something. And you're just kind of bringing this up. For those of you on Patreon, there was one reading that we recently did where um, Spirit was walking through a process of like understanding your own awareness, understanding what is your lens and understanding what is um, actually being related to in the world. Because we look th from our awareness through the, the barrier of our own lens out into the world. Well, this person is a classic example of somebody who sees things that are 
sees the dust and, and the log and what's written on their own lens, and then they think that it belongs, it's inherent to the environment or inherent to the people that they're looking on. I do think this person has prejudices. I don't, I mean, whenever I hear the word prejudice, I kind of automatically think of race and it might not have to do with race, but it, it, I'm okay, I'm hearing the word class. So it might actually be classist um, here or like you're just a different type of person. But again, I kind of feel like it's not a something that is obvious like gender or race, um, but it's there's something about you that makes you different and maybe it did kind of surprise this person. I don't know, this person really does have to chew on your energy here. Um, so yeah, this person just kind of thinks over it and over it and over it. And they really have not been able to make up their mind about you. They also don't understand like your values and because of it, they think that you're tricky. Now this is what's interesting. By the way, I, I don't know if I've made it clear or not, but this person's watching you. Another thing that they could be saying is that they're watching you in secret, but this person is about as subtle as a bull in a china shop. So you might know that this person's watching you um, or just kind of feel it because they think that they're this like elven person who's like light on the branches and like very subtle and like very, um, you know, with this, it's almost like they're going to shoot that arrow of truth, you know, um, once they find what they're looking for. But really they're this like huge bull that's, you know, thinking that they're hidden, but they're like, their energy is very much felt um, by, by you or I don't think that they're undetectable is what I want to say. Um, but yeah, so this person could be saying that they're like watching you, trying to figure you out because they think that you are tricky. Um, and what I, there's some projection that's going on here because this person's showing up as the djinn and you have woken this part of this person up. Not it, it was always there, but I feel like it's shadow. And there's something about you that's drawn up this person that is like their shadow self is like, they're very judgmental, entitled, arrogant, and critical. And this the reason I'm saying this person feels entitled is because with this earth energy, the thing that stands out about you the strongest is um, your boundaries. Like I think that you are this Pisces energy, which Pisces is, um, you know, it's mutable water energy. So it's very like um, wishy-washy. If you do have Pisces in your chart and you have like a strong earth energy in your moon or something, you'll, the, the Pisces energy kind of just becomes like a veil. You know, it's like a, um, you know, when you paint your nails, it, it's like the earth sign is the, the solid color that you paint underneath the sparkly shimmer. And the Pisces is just the sparkly shimmer. So you, it adds a different kind of quality to it, but you can kind of see through it. So, but yours is flipped. Yours is on the inside where you really are. I think a lot of you are quite spiritual. You're community oriented. You're very almost like etheric. I think you do have, um, you're multifaceted is what I'm trying to say because remember I was saying this person, it might be saying that you're two-faced and that they're gonna to get to the bottom of it because if you're two-faced, if you're displaying two faces in different scenarios and one around them and another one that they're not entitled to, that they for damn sure feel they should be entitled to, then you must be doing that because you're tricky and you're nefarious, right? When that's not the case here with you, you look very, um, you look, self-protective, you look um, boundaried, you know, um, there could be an element of self-respect here where I don't, maybe you didn't like the way that this person, I kind of am getting attitude off of this person. Like, I, I feel like maybe you didn't like the way that you, and it would be subtle. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you are like being self-protective and this person's taking that to mean that you are I heard the word disordered or that you are mistaken or that you are wrong, but I think there's a trickstery kind of quality that they are accusing you of or assuming about you in their mind or in conversation here with another person. To be fair, I think if this person is actually talking out loud um, to another person, they're not accusing you outright. I don't think they're like, I think this person, they would be saying things that kind of like, there's something I can't figure out about this person. And they recognize as well that something needs to change in order for them to get to the bottom of who it is that you are. And I think this person might kind of want to set up a trap, like, like some kind of bait situation. They could be talking about that, um, to see what you do. Like, we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second. But like I was saying, um, I feel like the thing that is most clear to this person that they've interacted with is your boundary, is your, your shell. Um, and the part of you that, um, maybe this person thought that you were more like earthy. I don't know, like this, like this card, the qualities of this card, maybe subtle, like you, you are in the background or something, but then you get around your friends and you like pop off. A lot of people are like that. I'm kind of like that, um, to be honest, but um, and then this person was like, I knew, I knew pile number one was a fake. Um, but really you're just self-protective. You, this is like a healthy thing. That's what I was getting at as well. Like, because the gin, 
um, like in myth, they are kind of like humans in the sense that they are accountable for their behavior, something this person may have forgotten because I think this person through their own entitlement has crossed some boundaries here and doesn't care about that. Um, but, and, and it's because they're only focused on what makes them different than a human, which is like they have some kind of powers or something, right? Um, but yeah, like, so interacting here with the, with the humans. Anyways, back to this like very trickstery thing because the, the djinn is kind of like a trickster energy and I'm noticing the horns. So this person like has you know, they're, they're big horns and they think that you have these like little horns. They're projecting their own trickstery energy like out onto you because there's a difference. And I do just want to say like, there's being two-faced. That's like a negative connotation, right? And it's intentionally weaponizing uh, that two-facedness to, to get what it is that you want to get yourself ahead. But there's also like, think about a diamond that has multiple faces and, but it's very clearly cohesive and like one one um, thing and that creates like this sparkly shimmery kind of an energy. I really am getting that you're sparkly and shimmery kind of beneath the surface and this person's drawn in. They're drawn in and they're attracted to that just like the siren energy, but you actually block it, you know, like unless unless you don't you feel like you're safe or that you're not being watched or something, that's when you let your like sparkly side show and then this person's, it reminds me of like, you know, like the Salem witch trials where you just imagine that the, I'm, this is just like me. I'm not stating this is historical fact. Okay. This is just time relating to the message, but you know how like in Salem, when they were burning all the witches and stuff, you kind of figure that there's gotta be some like jerk who there was just a woman who was being different and he found himself attracted to her and he's like, oh my gosh, well, I'm such a God fearing Christian person. I would never have lustful feelings towards anyone, or I should be able to control that. <clears throat> right? Like, Again, this lack of understanding in terms of human nature, like generic, basic, baseline, all these things that we all have to contend with, human nature. Oh, she must be a witch. And then you get accused of being something that you're not just because somebody else can't take responsibility for their own lens, right? So I, again, attractiveness may be something that's written on this person's lens for you. Like, wow, that is a very attractive person. Um, they must they're seeing that, uh, that, or I'm really, again, um, cause it's not just the attractiveness. It's like the lure energy. It's like feeling very pulled in by your energy and that's how they feel, but they're, they're attributing that as a quality that's innate within you. And it's, I think that you're a very lovely, beautiful person, but I think that you are multifaceted. That's another thing that this person um, can't quite figure out is um, this, mu I feel like you could fit into at least three different quality um, categories that would, however this person categorizes people like, oh, this is a quiet person. This is a shy person. This is an extroverted person. You know, you could fit into at least three different categories here and it shifts around and it changes maybe uh, appropriately. Like given the people that you're around and the level of intimacy you have with them and your in terms of your connection, the level of trust between the two of you, um, and so that's what this person does not understand. Now, another thing that I feel like this person might be kind of mad, I think you could have revealed something here that this person, like the people that they are typically around and or somebody that they felt like was a lover kind of a situation, maybe like a very strong soulmate connection, is actually not. They're actually a poser because this person, they're, this is what their guides are kind of like trying to get them to realize and understand through introducing this person to your energy is that something needs to change. And I'm hearing that song, Everything Has Changed by Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran. Um, that you are actually, um, what, what these posers, because I feel like this person can be surrounded by posers. Again, very like this person may have an elevated position so everyone around them is kissing their butt and they don't realize that. And then they think that you are the one, even though I just don't, I think that you're guarded around this person. I don't think you appreciate how they interact with you. So how can this person say that you're trying to lure them in at the same time that you're guarded with them? I don't, that's like also not making sense to me. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't get this. I don't get that part of it. But yeah, so you might've revealed that somebody in their life and this is the lover's card. So I do feel like for a lot of you, this is a lover's um, situation, but keep in mind this is Gemini energy. So that's siblings, people that they're around, like um, that they aren't who they say they are, that those people are actually two-faced because I think it's it's your multidimensionality here, pal number one, that this person's having trouble relating to. So I think they've got some very two-dimensional people that are around them that are kind of maybe trying to pretend to be this sparkly thing, but it's actually they're very black and white thinkers and um, 
you know, like funnel people and maybe the convert through the conversations that they have, it's like this person is good and this person is bad. There's not a lot of nuance, you know, it's kind of either you've said something directly to this person that has made them realize that, or I think it really honestly is just you being yourself because I think this person's in a situation where it's like, if they do accept that you are not something trickstery and cause this person's trickstery. So I don't, I don't get it. Like, um, but I think they're projecting that quality out onto you. Cause look at this, I even told you, I think this person's trying to set a trap. That's trickster energy, but this person is projecting that onto you that you are the trickster. You get it? It's like weird here. Um, especially if this person is in a very tumultuous, like combative, like we call it the F fight cycle um, over on Patreon. Like if this person's stuck in this like tumultuous cycle with somebody and they're starting to realize like that's actually what's disordered and that's what's actually not healthy and that's what's actually not normal. And they've actually gotten a glimpse here of you being all multifaceted and shimmery. Then this person kind of got to admit to themselves that somebody tricked the trickster, that they got taken for a ride. And I think that's also what's uncomfortable here. So this person is comparing certain things and I do feel like there needs to be a change in this person's location before they can actually um, start to process things like, well, you know, um, this person is also for some reason, this, I don't, this person is very rigid because they see the world through very static lens because I'm kind of getting that you went through a transformation yourself. And then this person seeing you in Leo energy, very strong, very confident, um, you know, maybe you let your hair down a little bit actually, or metaphorically or something like this. And you're like this beautiful kind of a person. This is what I don't get. It's like, I feel like your hair in a bun, like around this person. And then like you let your hair down around your friends and this person saw that and it's like, oh, she's trying to trick me. And it's like, yeah, I put my hair in a bun to trick you. <laughs> like, you know what? Um, there's something like that going on here where this person's just not dealing in reality, but um, it's because of their own feelings and, and of things that they would have to accept. And it's gonna pass like a kidney stone um, here for this person when they start to kind of, and, and it's really good for this person as well to understand you. It's like the more points they plot in understanding you and how you operate, it's actually um, really good for them. And it is generating their own transformation, their own gnosis. You're almost walking this person through um, a transformative process that you yourself have already been through, but you do not need to be around for this to happen. You don't owe this person anything. Cause I get a sense that this person just kind of like eavesdrops on your conversations. Um, if they are around you and especially if they're around you, like hang out with your friends or if you're talking on the phone, um, this person listens to that and yeah. And I'm hearing the path is a circle and I'm picturing one of those things where like, um, to power some, like a, a, a wheel, you know, or something they'd hook a, a donkey up to, a of this wheel in order to generate like electricity or something back in the day. Like, I just feel like this person has to keep chewing on this, like keep going around and around and around on your energy. And it has something to do with like your friends. Maybe this person is, um, maybe they, they see your friends and they've heard conversations that your friends are having and they're like, whoa, I didn't know that. And there's something about like, I just didn't know that was, I don't know, like the opinions of the world or, or something here like that. But this person is um, very quick. I'm hearing quick to judge. And they, yeah, and you give them pause. That's really like the crux of all of this. This person wants to judge you and others in the sense of they want to kind of funnel you into some type of category of, are you an introvert, an extrovert, a shy person? Like, you know, and then they want to determine what that means about you. Like, and, and it's all very two dimensional here. And again, I think I'm hearing this person's thinking has gotten very sloppy based on like who it is that they are, where they're rooted and who they're around. Cause I don't, I don't think this person's thinking is naturally so sloppy and two dimensional, um, or it's not meant to be that, or that could be something they're meant to confront here. Um, in the, in this life, this person does think that you are very beautiful. They do. Um, and that you are very alluring and that you're sparkly and that you're shimmery and that you have a lot of talents and that you're inspirational and they may be saying as, as much, but they don't trust that. They think that you are the only reason that you would be beautiful and inspirational is to try to lure a big old man like them or a little old lady like them. Like that's what they think. That's what they think. Um, you know, 
So there is something here about a combative like relationship. And I think that you may have illuminated for this person that what they thought was passion is really, is really not good. It's, um, and again, I feel like it's just through the fact of you being you. So you should definitely not feel like you did anything wrong here. And I also think that you struggle with um, your own self thoughts with the eight of swords and with this earth energy. And I feel like this is a part of your boundaries is that you don't trust yourself. I think maybe you do lack in confidence, um, like lower self esteem or something like that. But again, when you get around your friends and people that you trust, I think you open up and I think you're silly. And I think that you allow like this side of yourself, your real self to be seen, which is so precious and so beautiful and so intoxicating. And um, and I think that people have bullied you, like people of the same sex who are jealous. They bullied you into submission, into silence. Um, they've tried to steal your energy. They've tried to come off like they are like you. And I think that they, you just have learned to keep yourself contained. And um, this person, that's another thing that this person doesn't understand. If you were really all these things, if you were really this like, you know, beautiful Pegasus, you know, there's got to be something like demonic and I think that you've dealt with devil kind of energy, people who want to bind you, attach to you, people who are not in their right mind is what I'm hearing. And so you've learned the nine of swords was what was under that. You've learned to put um, your boundaries up. And I am hearing that you are the wounded warrior. And there's something here about your energy as well, where you know yourself because you are vulnerable. Like, and you know that, like when you, your big, your, I'm hearing, it's almost like your one and only defense is like your big wall. So that wall is going to be big enough to acknowledge the fact that it's really what you got to throw at an issue. So if somebody gets in the wall, it's almost like the temple could be desecrated and you know it and that you would, you would feel like I'm hearing just like you did as a child, scared, defenseless, open, um, just vulnerable. And you don't want to fail that way. So this person has no right to judge you for being self-protective, no right to be like suspicious of you, to look down on you. And I do think this person wants to look down on you. And I do think that it's because of your femininity. They don't like that you have a pull over them. Um, they want to accuse you is what I'm getting. Like they don't like that you have a, a pull over them that they feel attracted to drawn in and lured in by you. So like I was saying though, this person may want to um, set up some kind of like an ambush situation. Again, they're the trickster. They're the one behaving like this. This is how you, you, it's projection can be a very difficult thing to spot. This is plain as day. This person is thinking about setting up an ambush situation here for you. Um, a bait situation. They want to catch you in their trap so they can be like, aha, I knew it, you know? Um, and honestly, whether or not this person is even capable of setting up a trap that would actually have some level of like validity, like them measuring what they claim to be measuring, I would highly doubt because this person's not in their right mind dealing with you. And I'm kind of wondering if you feel like something about your energy just does this to people on occasion. It just makes them outside their right mind. <laughs> like, you know, um, yeah, but I, I think this person might want to invite you to some kind of party, celebration, um, a reunion, something like that. Um, they might want to offer you some kind of a new beginning, but they're going to pretend like they're not there. Um, or I don't know, like there's something here about this mummy, like that something here is like is deaded and all wrapped up, um, blocked off at the heart, something here like that. But um, and they may even have a friend like do this a friend who is both like cute and cuddly, but also like very ruthless um, And you might be on good terms here with this friend and this friend might offer you some kind of Invitation here and then this person's gonna aha like kind of come out here all aggro and like um, This is a nasty energy that comes off this person I don't think this person's real with themselves about the fact that this lives within them um they would rather just project it all out onto you than deal with it in, in and of themselves, which is why their guides are saying, yeah, because this person's in that state, this is going to pass like a kidney stone because they, they're living in their own delusion. They're living in their own state of like permanent projection when it comes to you. And they're also, there is somebody coming through to say, um, thank you so much for putting yourself here in this position for agreeing to be passed through the kidneys. <laughs> Um, the kidneys is a filtration system is what they're saying. Thank you for being a part of this, um, filtration, even though it, I think you have felt disrespected here by this person. So, um, this person also needed to compare your energy 
and what it looks like when somebody truly is humble and what it looks like when somebody really does have a lot to offer, but they're not all thinking they're all that in a bag of chips or something like that. I don't know. So let's get some messages here from this person, shall we? Somebody said they missed the messages. I think I missed them too. So, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> um, I always feel so good when I'm around you. But again, this is like a, a, a dis, like a dis, it, it causes distrust in this person. I'm trying to give you hints about my feelings. Maybe this person feels like you rejected them. But again, I feel like this is self-preservation. And I think there was a way that this person spoke to you or their body language was to you where you were like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't, I have enough problems. <laughs> I just heard, I have enough problems. <laughs> oh, okay. You are comfy blanket, rainy morning, big breakfast vibes, and I love it. So, so far this person is thinking very highly of you, but again, it's like because they think very highly of you, they distrust you. Um, there's a side to me I'm not sure you would understand. And I do feel, I'm hearing the word culprit. Like I do feel like this person has felt caught out because, oh, I haven't mentioned this this whole time, but literally since this reading has started, I've been hearing this song, um, That Thing by Lauren Hill. And the, um, I can't tell, you know, that whole song is basically like her giving advice. And I, again, I don't know if you gave this person advice, like relationship advice about um, who they're with, or you gave a friend relationship advice and this person overheard you and that illuminated something. But um, I'm hearing that part in the song where she's like, uh, something like sleeping with the gin. Now that was the sin that did Jezebel in. Who you gonna tell when the repercussions spin? So, um, this person is a gin and um, they kind of know it. And so maybe you were telling your friend like not to go for a person like this person that you're asking about and they overheard it. And even if they don't, they might think that you understand that they're, a, that they are what you were talking about. But even if you don't know that, they felt like you were calling them out kind of like that you were, they felt like you were judging them, you know, because I don't know. I hope that makes sense where there's something that you said that I feel like this person overheard and they felt like you were directly saying like, don't get with a person like, like them, you know, what would you think if you knew all this trickstery kind of behavior? So, okay. It is sounding like this person's more aware of their, this other side. There is fun, something fundamentally different between us. That is so true. And because there's a fundamental dif there's definitely a difference in how you think and how you process the world. I honestly think this person would be very interested to like ask you a benign question, like a very banal question of just like, what do you think about, I don't know, anything um, about this topic or this, this conundrum or something. This person just would want to hear like you walking them through how you think about that thing, like how you are processing and relating to that subject because it would be so different than how this person does it. First of all, I think this person's brain, it just kind of goes. Like they're almost not even really in control of it. Um, like it just goes and this person just kind of trusts it to go. Um, I don't know. There's, and there's something here like that. I think this person's sexy. Um, and they're used to, they think you're sexy here too, but it's like this person I'm hearing, why don't you act like the other people act, you know, like whoever this person's interested in, um, why don't you act like them? You know? And because you don't act like them, this person's not like, Oh, well, everybody's different. And you know, Behavior doesn't exist in a vacuum. This person's like, I'm on to you, like for no reason. I wanna tell you how I feel. Okay, this person does have like a crush on you. I think they feel like sex with you would be a life-changing experience. Um, but what would you think if you knew? Did I already have this in here? Yeah. Okay, so there, that's definitely like a recurring thought on this person's mind. What would you think if you knew? I don't even know why I'm anymore. Identity crisis. That is honestly what I feel like your energy has like spawned in this person. Identity crisis, like the life that they've built for themselves. That is good because this person needs to move their behind from the life that they built up for themselves. I think, like I said, this could be a career that they've chosen, that they're very just rooted in. They're not even, I'm hearing they're not even bringing their creative self to this career anymore. They're not keeping it even fresh for themselves. Um, and whatever it is that they're doing, they're bored, they're tired. Some, it's like the same stuff. Um, but it's also, I'm getting this strongly that this is a location. There's just a location here and it's the people, the, the, okay, I'm hearing the entertainment, the people, like the nightlife, the, the whatever that is available here to this person. It's like, just really got them stuck in a rut, but it has absolutely had some kind of effect on their cognition, um, here in a, in a measurable, tangible way. Um, yeah. So this person's brain really responds to their environment or something like that. 
Are you happy without me? Um, yeah. I think you may be the most compassionate person I've ever met. But again, that makes them distrustful. I hate being vulnerable. I think that makes two of you. <laughs> um, I'm protecting myself. That makes two of you. But what I don't like about this person is that you protecting themselves. They, This person feels determined to get information about you. This person, in order for them to, to funnel you into a category or to finally understand you and your fullness, they require more information about you. Information that they should be concerned about earning from you by building a trusting, intimate relationship. You know, taking things slow, honoring your boundaries, um, you know, on honoring you and honoring where they're not entitled to go, where they need an invitation, if they were being respectful. And instead this person is, they, why well, I think they feel entitled and arrogant and, and, and they're honestly like not thinking about you and about how all of this would be affecting you. This is like, as somebody who studied psychology and I'm, you know, I'm not an expert by any means, but it's like, this is a terrible experiment. <laughs> like this is terrible. This is, um, like I said, he's this Jin person, he or she, but, it's a very doing energy. It's not going to measure what they think they're going to measure because what it would be measuring is their own arrogance. That would be the variable that would be having the most impact on you. And they're not accounting for it in their experiment because they think that they're a lot sneakier than they actually are. And there's disrespect. You're responding to the disrespect. You're responding to somebody um, overstepping your boundaries. So this is again, a normal, healthy human response when somebody triggers your boundaries, this person's not synthesizing it like that. This person thinks they want to equate this to a quality specific to you. And we all have different boundaries, you know? So this person can't even identify when they've found one of your personal boundaries because that's what building an intimate relationship is, right? When you discover, oh, well, this is a, this bound, person's boundary, then you, you demonstrate that you care enough about them to respect that boundary and you actually build the intimacy, you know, maybe the boundary gets moved and maybe it doesn't, but that's how your relationship kind of gets moved along. But this person, they're not even identifying that they're bumping up against a boundary and that you feel it and that you are responding to them disrespecting your boundary like a healthy human would. But then they, they're trying to say that your response to this in whatever capacity is indicative of a personality trait when it's defensive. And then this person's like, God, pile number one, so defensive. <laughs> and it's like, that's a healthy response. You know, it's a healthy response given the situation that you guys are in and how this person's behaved. They're not, fa this person's incapable of factoring in their own behavior um, and how it affects the situation, which is like kind of rule number one in psychology is understanding your, how, that's why, like, I always say this, like therapists are above all else. They're very solidly trained mirrors they know how to like mirror back to you in a healthy way because they can't ever fully remove themselves from the equation so they have to factor themselves into the equation in a way that's helpful and if it can't be helpful at least it's benign and this person doesn't know how to do that they're very triggered and they're very charged coming at you and this pile the last thing i'll say about this because i know i've talked a lot um is that it's this very much reminds me of Beauty and the Beast where like this beauty part of yourself that is there's so much like Venus energy here like beautiful harmonious like diplomatic that kind of a thing um that part of you is bumping up on this like beastly part of this person and I don't feel like I kind of feel like this person seems like a regular human being you know in, in some way <laughs> like Again, I think that maybe they came off like a wish fulfillment to you and to other people, but then they have this side to them that's very critical and arrogant and judgmental and needs to look down on everybody else. And that's that beastly side of them. And, you know, I feel like you are kind of like, you need to control your temper where the beast in that movie, you know, he treated people badly because of his position. And then when he got turned into the beast, he had to start factoring in that if he was just kind to Belle, even in his beastly form, he got a completely different response from her. You know, so then he started to take personal accountability, he started to change himself. That's the process that this person's guide is really, okay, I feel I do feel like there's a specific guide that is, um, they may have a connection to the djinn, actually. Because um, I know djinn can be positive, djinn can be negative. And this person you're asking about has a djinn-like quality, and maybe they kind of teeter back and forth, like between the positive and the negative, but there's a more positive quality gin that is really wanting to work with this person. It's, and if it's not exactly this, I don't, this is just how the message kind of comes through, you know? 
And the, the best way that they've thought to help this person through this process, which is why you can tell this is some kind of high vibrational soulmate, your, your souls are old friends is what I'm getting, um, is for this person to kind of chew on your energy and to become inspired as to what's possible you know, in love relationships, but as a, an expression of the human spectrum in general um, is what I'm getting. Because I think that you are a very inspired, very creative person. And um, I do think you've kind of created an Eden. Like, I think you have a very beautiful inner world, pile number one. And when you open up and when you show it to people, it is like really nice. It's a nice experience for people. And I think that you were never going to open up to this person the way that they were behaving. And that's healthy and normal. And you should never change that is what I'm getting. Um, but in fact, I feel like you need, um, added defenses. So maybe you can shave back here on your wall a little bit, and that could be like the path that you were on. But yeah, I just feel like this person has got a glimpse of like this beautiful inner world and automatically, I feel like they kind of automatically have rejected it because of the mirror that it shines onto them, onto, um, their, their self and the, their community, their siblings, their children, their primary love relationship here that's actually pretty judgmental and pretty um, combative. This person could be projecting those qualities onto you because it's easier to project them onto you than to actually deal with them um, in their, their own life. And I again, I have like a lot of empathy and a lot of compassion for somebody who would be going through that. But yeah, I definitely feel like you should listen to that thing by Lauren Hill because I kind of feel like you are the Lauren Hill in this situation. Like all that advice, um, energy that's like coming through could be you. Um, and it's, yeah, this person feels kind of like called out by some advice that they could have overheard you giving to a friend is what I want to say here. Um, or a sibling or maybe your sibling is a friend of theirs or something like that. And this person feels like they're a card carrying member of some kind of group. And this group they feel like is golden. They feel like it's elevated, that it's wealthy, and that it's also like spiritually transformative, but it's not. Um, it's, I'm, I'm no doubt that they're like, materially obsessed but um I don't like this person is equating material obsession with like some kind of higher spiritual path and um of course that's incompatible and this Pisces energy knows that and is getting ready to ascend so Pisces kind of starts to divorce itself from the world very strongly they almost aren't here in the world um so yeah, for some of you, this person might feel like you're not dealing in reality, but they thought that you were very firmly grounded in it. I don't know, but I actually think that you could be very spiritual. So this was a very long pile. This person um, is definitely watching you. Um, what they're saying about you, they're processing you and all these, um, a myriad of different traits that you possess um, because you are interesting, unique, and different in a way that I can see through these cards is truly beautiful. And I just want to say, well done. Like, I just feel like you are very, um, you have a very beautiful inner world and this person feels entitled to that and feels judged by comparison to you and to your friends, I think, and to your energy and things like that. Um, there's a strong, they're very attracted to you. It's making me want to laugh because this person thinks they're stealthy and they're just not. Um, yeah. So that's what I have for you guys. Pound number one. If that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Um, also, if you're interested, I have a Patreon and info is in the description box below. We do two exclusive readings that we vote on every single month and it's just a good vibe over there. Um, really good, really good community. So if you like my reading style, um, I do pretty long readings. So um, you'll find me over there as well. Bye guys.
Okay, so pile number two, what is this person saying about you? Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so this is really interesting because um, first of all, this person's really not saying anything novel about you. This person is saying things about you that many other people have said about you in the past. It's just that there is something here about this person and we've seen this in the readings before. There's something about the way that they look, the way that they talk, the way they express themselves, certain traits that they have, but certain traits that they don't have, right? And certain traits that they have, but for this reason and not that reason. It's all very specific here with this person in order to kind of um, draw you in, draw your attention in. That way, it's like, there's something about this person where you, you continue to chew on their energy and whatever that is, you know, is very specific to you because this is a highly spiritually guided situation. There is actually, um, karma here. There's pretty devastating karma, honestly, like is, uh, from past from your past lives here to be worked out between you and this person. But I feel like your guide team, your spirit guides, they have worked long and hard to get you in a room with this person, to get you conversing with this person, interacting with this person so that you can bounce your energy off of them in order to, and the, res the feedback that you receive here about yourself and about the space here kind of between you and this person is invaluable. That's what I'm getting. It is truly invaluable. All right. But there's some third parties. And I feel like there's third parties overlapping, third parties overlapping, third parties. And the biggest one, hear me, hear me, hear me. The biggest one is your own psyche, right? Think about it, right? All of our senses, you navigate this world with your senses. You see things, you hear things, you smell things, you touch things, right? You're kind of always taking things in, but every single thing you take in, you take in through your mind, you take in through your brain. And that psyche is what is really at play here, specifically certain defense mechanisms, okay? And that is a normal, healthy part of brain function. And also the other thing is, you know, studies have shown that, and I learned this from the healthy gamer. He's amazing. He's on YouTube. He's a Harvard educated psychiatrist. Like he's, um, but he's really, really good at putting things in layman's terms where it's like easy for us plebs to understand. Right. But he was explaining that the studies have actually shown with defense mechanisms that you can educate people on defense mechanisms, on the specific ones, on how they function. And it still makes no real measurable difference as to their capability of becoming aware that they're in the middle of their defense mechanism being like activated and being tripped up. So it still takes like kind of a concerted effort to make sure you're not falling into any thinking traps like there with yourself. Right. So it's just, it's completely, completely normal. And I just want to say that in order to, again, try to deactivate these defense mechanisms that I see that are heavily, heavily active. So the thing to understand is that we're going to get into this message and we're going to talk about what this person's saying about you, but you've got to come up at that through defense mechanisms, through understanding your own defense mechanisms. And I'm seeing three that are active here, but I want to put those to the side here um, so that we can like really keep going here into this message. Now that's one of the third parties that's kind of mitigating. It's an intermediary between like, in involving itself in the communication between you and this person. So something here is happening between the words that leave your mouth and the things that this person hears and vice versa. Their communication is a real point of frustration and contention here on both sides on both sides. And that's something you're both talking about. I feel like, um, is this like not really able to sync up link up here. And it's not for a lack of trying here. That's where the frustration comes in. Cause I can see that you and this person that you've a you're asking about, even though you do have very different communication styles and you both like need very different things in a, um, to feel like a conversation has been productive and, um, like you're safe and, you know, seen fully and understood in conversation, even though you both need very different things. I can see that you and this person have really actually both made a, a solid effort to meet in the middle. So if you're blaming this person and you're trying to like, that's just your psyche. Again, that's that defense mechanism, trying to short circuit, trying to shortcut out of this. Cause there, there's a lot more nuance and complexity to this. And it's important that you kind of keep circling back around and chewing on it. That's the process by which you're working out this big karmic lesson, right? And it is, it's a process, right? So, um, so like I said, those defense mechanisms, that's one third party here. Now there's three very distinct different energies here in this setup. And I feel like they could very well be mixing and mingling here in this particular situation. Um, so if there is a third party, cause some of you may have tried to offload communication responsibility with this person in some way, shape or form, because you don't feel like you're good at it. Um, or you could have just tried to like overlook it. I don't know. So you're kind of like offloading that, that piece. And so there's another person here who is kind of, uh, impacting communication. That's where things are like really, really getting lost in translation 
because there's something that this person needs from you. Like actually in terms of, of you, um, we'll talk about that here in just a second. So there could literally be a third party, like a person um, is what I'm getting at. That won't be for everybody. Now, another third party here is there potentially could be some kind of a business or a work environment. And the way that I want you to think about this in terms of how everything's getting lost in translation here is that this business or this um, work environment institution, like whatever this is, it has its own needs. It has its own needs in order to remain viable, to remain functional. And those needs are also like kind of part of this third party here as well. So basically it's like, this is the place, again, if this is active in your situation, because like I said, there's third parties here, but I don't, and for a lot of you, there's overlapping third parties. So, I mean, your fourth, fifth, sixth parties, but it's like expon it's um, exponentially growing. It's not just, you know, four, five, and six. The What I mean by that is like the confusion, the haze, right? Um, that this is creating. So what I mean by like this business is kind of affecting communication or this institution is that without it, if you weren't interacting through this business or through the lens of like something here, you would have a very different interaction here with this person. And I think for some of you, you kind of, um, like you could be trying to assign certain traits here to a person, but they have like a business function, a business responsibility that you really need to start seeing them through that because it is it is mitigating how they come across to you. And it, in a, it should, you know, um, it should. Um, so all of those things, like it's important really to keep in mind here. Now, in terms of, of what this person is saying about you, that's where these like three different um, kinds of people really come into play. Because I feel like, and, and here, here's the thing, this is why we gotta get around those psychological defense mechanisms. This is where it's gonna require some radical ownership is the place, like radical ownership of your stuff, of who you are, of your position, even if it's uncomfortable, right? And I'm, I'm flashing back to some mindfulness training that I've had where, you know, they, they teach you about like staying here in the present moment, which means like keeping your mind very close to your body, not letting it kind of wander off. But in terms of this, it's like, yeah, in the present moment, that doesn't always bring peace right away. It doesn't always, eventually it can, but that's just because the present moment is really the only place of power. It's the only place of power where you could potentially experience whatever it is that you're experiencing here in this connection without shame, without guilt, and without fear where you can shake the shackles of control, but it, it's not just a given because you've brought your awareness back to this present moment. So I wanna warn you, I wanna pull you in and, and encourage you towards some radical acceptance of yourself, some radical ownership, and just radical honesty with yourself as to which of these people you genuinely are. Okay. And it might not be comfortable. So it's also important to just check in with yourself and to um, make sure that you're in a really good spot here, because I, I got some bad news for you guys here. Pile number two, this connection is meant to be triggering. That's why it was orchestrated by your guides, because there is, like I said, there's, there's nothing novel. There's nothing new about what this person's saying about you. A lot of people have given you this feedback before, but it just slides right off for whatever reason. Either you don't respect their opinion or you can kind of poke holes into why they feel that way about you. You're like, well, it's because they're lacking in this way or they're lacking in that way, you know? Um, or like, yeah, you just don't care like what they have to say about you. But there's something about this person where this feedback actually sticks. It actually lands. And it's not that you have to completely um, agree with everything that they said. It's just a matter of like, um, you know, kind of stirring it into your batter a little bit here, just to kind of give it a little different tint, a little different shimmer, you know, um, and, and using that here for yourself. All right. So we're going to get into this. It, it very well could be triggering, but there's Shadow Bishak energy here for all of you, which means there's this truth here about yourself, which we're probably about to tap into where if you express it, people, you don't think that people understand. Like you think that people are not going to respect you or you think that people are um, whatever you like, not, not going to understand for whatever reason, but it's that deeper truth that um, if you actually do express it to the people that is, that is involved, that's what makes all of this haze go away. And a lot of you think that you're tapping into that truth, but you when you say things to or about this person that you're asking about that I think you wanna make amends with and make reconciliation with, which we'll talk about in a second, what those words actually mean, um, then it's like, that's what clears this up because I feel like this connection has really felt to you and to any other person that's involved here like navigating the Bermuda Triangle. That's kind of a functionality, like kind of piece of it. Um, and that's again, because of like all the, the haze that's going on here. 
um, that's created by all these overlapping third parties. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. Well, actually, the last thing I want to say about a lot of you have thought that you were expressing your truth here, but it's like you express your strategy, you know, like I want this from you and I have made my efforts, right? Because I have done this and I've done this and I've done this. Um, that's kind of the vibe that you're each talking about, like in terms of each other. Well, I've made this concession or that concession. Um, I've done this thing. I've done that thing. And the image that I get in my mind, sorry, I, I promise we're going to get into like the specifics about what this person's saying, but I feel like you can kind of get this general vibe. Um, but the image that I get in my mind is in Beauty and the Beast, you know? So there's that scene where Belle has locked herself in the room and it's like before dinner. So she was invited to dinner, but she doesn't go. And so the Beast is like starting to get like all upset and antsy and Lumi the candlestick guy he is like haven't you thought that like maybe she's the one she's the one who can break the spell and I feel like that's what's going on here is each one of you um, or the person that you're asking about specifically I feel like that person even though there may be other people involved even primary people that are involved here this person is your key um, to solving this karma this karmic riddle here for yourself to, to um, to get you to open a new door and I do feel like this is to your own power and to like a whole other um, like function stack for yourself. This is just gonna level you up in such a big way, but it doesn't mean that it's not difficult because karma means that there's restriction and it's this long process over time and that's what you're engaged in, but this person's kind of your Rosetta Stone where it's like, if you can understand this person, if you can fully understand their perspective without judgment, without blame, because um, that's those psychological defense mechanisms trying to juke you out of like whatever you may have contributed, not that you caused everything, but whatever you may have contributed to how things turned out. Um, that's what I mean by radical ownership and putting you back in the place of your own power. You can't control other people. I feel like this connection, um, especially for like two of you, but potentially all three of you, um, it's really prone to um, this like projection outwards. And um, projection, by the way, is the act of attributing certain qualities, traits, motivations to a person that in reality does not exist inherently in that person. It exists in the, and it originates in the mind of the person doing the projecting. So, and it's because of all of this kind of blame shifting and protecting a wounded part of self. That's where it's coming from. And spirit is also saying, please see through the lens of compassion because each one of you is developed in the way that you have by asking yourself a question of what do I need to do for, to be loved, to be like seen, to be ex um, accepted. And so by bringing all of you together, you're kind of um, deconstructing these walls. You have the potential here to prove your own narrative wrong, like here in a, in a type of way, okay? So like back to the story of like Beauty and the Beast, right? So he's like, well, of course I thought that she's the one who can break the spell, right? That's kind of the vibe that is going on here, that key factor with this person. Um, and he's like, but she's so beautiful and I'm just this like monster. She's never gonna see me for anything besides like, you know, this. And Mrs. Potts, I. I grew up on Disney. I can hear some of you like, this bitch has this like completely memorized. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, Beauty and My Beast is my favorite one. Anyway, so Mrs. Potts is like, um, well, you have to help her to see past all that. And he's like, but I don't know how. And that's what's going on here. And instead of just admitting to yourself, like, I don't know how. And that's a me thing that I need to figure out. Because I think like from each person's position and you're each nursing a, um, like a muscle that hasn't been used. And you're trying to over lean on a muscle that you're over used to leaning on. So you're nursing this place, all of you, inside of you where you feel less than, but you're talking yourself around it by using your um, psychological defense mechanisms by saying, well, if this person, you know, um, like, and he, the beast says that too. He's like, but she's being so difficult, you know, like she's not opening the door. I said the thing, I did the thing, I was the nice way, I did the, th and then she didn't do what I wanted her to do. And that's the thing about people, right? Um, Cause this is like a long, longer process. That's what this is, okay? And this, the point that you're looking for, the coordinates, the X, Y axis, cause somebody's got the X and somebody's got the Y, is somebody here needs to feel safe and somebody here wants to move slow, like towards the long term. But you've got to meet there. If you want to start moving slow towards the long term, you got to tend to somebody feeling safe. And if you want to feel safe here, then you got to tend towards somebody making slow progress. That's what I mean. Like you both have different needs in the conversation to feel productive. And you have to think about how can I concede a little bit here? How can I, um, okay, so back to Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> um, so then they start giving him all this advice, right? Mrs. Potts and Lumiere. And so he's like, well, I don't know how, right? Like the beast is saying, I don't know how to get her to open the door to me. 
And I feel like that's kind of all of you. I don't know how. I don't have the skill set. I don't have the function stack. What do I do? So I start giving him this advice. They start advising him to death, right? And Mrs. Potts is like, well, be warm and be gentle and, you know, be open. And Lumiere is like, dazzle her with your debonair wit. And so he's like, the beast is like trying to like f f contort himself into all these things as they're saying it, like, you know, smile, like sit up straight, you know, and he's like trying to contort his body. And then he just gets overwhelmed by that. And he just like, Ugh, like it's no use because what they're doing is Mrs. Potts is telling him about herself. When Mrs. Potts connects in relationship, she is warm and she is nurturing. That's who she really is. And she just, that's how she makes her connections with people. So that comes naturally from her. She's not sitting there in a, in a conversation saying, oh, remember to be warm. Like, remember to be nurturing. It's just who she is. And she allows people to see that. She opens that side of herself up to be vulnerable. Well, Lumiere, he's funny. Like he has a dabonair wit, you know? So he's not thinking to himself like, oh my gosh, be funny, be funny. What they're trying to say is like, connect with who you are and and try to get that to come across like in a way that is genuine and authentic and so it's it's not coming from this this place of like pay attention to your body language pay attention to your tone of voice I mean yes those could be things that are getting in in, in the way but why do we pay attention to those things in the first place right why, why does it matter somebody's body language towards us their tone of voice well it's because it says something about something deeper deeper going on it says something about you it says something about your motivations. It says something about your worldview and how you're put, placing the pieces together. If you think you're better than other people, but you're trying to, uh, and you think that you're the authority in the situation and people are just stupid if they don't recognize that and they just don't listen to you, well, that's gonna come across. Even if you try to fix your tone of voice, get yourself into a certain posture, say all the right things, make all the right motions because of a little thing called disfluency. There's a disfluency between the way that you actually feel. So this is about the long process of actually getting to your psychology. Now that's just one position here on the field, okay? So um, that's kind of like what I was trying to describe is like you can see how this is really difficult to get to, but it's about peeling the, the onion back. And when I say that all everybody involved here has made genuine attempts to actually reach out and to, to, to try to understand the other person, the other parties involved, to try to make concessions here. Everyone here has genuinely done that, but it's about like peeling the, lay, the onion back even further. And that ties back into, a lot of you think that you've, you're sharing your truth here with this person because you're, the truth that you'll share is, you know, I was trying to do this and you frustrated me with this and like da 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 da. I'm talking about a deeper truth, which um, we'll get to, but let's talk about these three positions on the field. So again, I just want to remind you, this may be triggering and you may have to have some extreme ownership here and be really, really honest with yourself as to who you are in the field because this is all about a weakness that you're nursing in yourself and you're trying to overcompensate for by um, using a different muscle, which is um, like I'm thinking about this, like in the body, you know, um, you work biceps, well, then you need to work triceps the other day because then you're just going to, you know, you work on strength, but then you got to work on flexibility. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems down the road. Um, and this may be like just pointing you in that direction. So let's start with the easiest one because for if this is you, right, there's one person here on the field, um, which very well could be you. And um, what this person is saying is that uh, they really, you have a knowledge and a skill set, okay? So actually, how am I going to go about this? Because it's like, I may have to like kind of repeat and say like similar things. Something isn't what it seems here. That's what all of you are kind of like saying. And you're talking about uh, methodology. You're talking about uh, routine communication. And um, you're talking about it making you, it's stirring you up inside and making you feel a little bit anxious and not really knowing how to navigate around it. But it's coming from like very different positions. Okay. So there's one of you is very talented. Um, and you are really um, good at communicating that. It is actually making me think of the healthy gamer um, here on YouTube where he is a Harvard educated psychiatrist. He's got the chops, like he has the skills and the talents. Obviously he's had to work his way up beyond that, but you can tell that he just um, cares about people and he understands people. And so he's gotten where he is with this engine, this Libran engine, you know? Um, so he's not only good, he not only has the knowledge, but he has the ability to kind of like communicate it. So somebody here could be saying like, yeah, you know, I really like this person. Um, they have the knowledge. Um, I really am drawn into their skill set and their approach, but it's like, they can't really get in to see you. Um, maybe because there's a lot of competition, they don't know how to stand out to you in order to, um, like be able to work with you and like, ha like over the long term, but that's what they want. And there's like some frustration here around that. Um, 
And, but they're trying, they're just kind of like, you know, resigned to the fact that you're a busy person and maybe like you're very in demand in terms of your skill set. Now, when I say that you're nursing a weakness for this pile, it's because you've been around these other two types of energies in your past as leaders that um, you are trying not to be like. And we'll talk about those here in a second. You're, you're trying not to be that way and you can't quite get around that image. You don't want to make people feel the way that you felt around these two types of people. So you're trying to protect yourself and, and, it's making you less available to people who actually really do want you. They want what you have. They value what you have. But I feel like this is a self-esteem kind of a thing. Um, but you actually do have the depth of knowledge and you really do care about people. And this is a part of a greater transformation here in your own process. It's just that's why you've been around these other types of people is because spirit needs you to see that you're not like them and that um, you're kind of just in your own way. You need to like get, get out of the way. Um, and so let's leave that there. So then there's another type of person here who is all fluff. This is a person who um, wants some kind of position of power or authority. They may even want to be admired or worshipped. Um, they may want to be a teacher here of some kind, but the thing is they don't have the engine. They don't have the skill set, the depth of knowledge. They haven't put themselves, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to have some kind of like a college degree or something, but this is like a person who doesn't even like study a subject in depth um, on their own. It's very surface level. They may pull out like just, um, you know, simple concepts um, and and think, you know, they really just want, they want the position. They want to sit at the front of the room, but they don't want to do what it takes to actually make themselves competent um, in order to get there. So this is a person who um, is good with people. I think they're good at massaging people. Um, it's like a good salesman kind of an energy. Um, but that's that's the muscle that they're protecting. So they're they're good socially and they leverage that and that is a skill set in of itself. They leverage that, they over rely on that when in reality they don't have like the chops. They don't have the, the like I said the knowledge, the depth of knowledge, depth of skill. Um to fall back on. So this is supposed to be triggering and jolting here for this person because it should force them into a position of like I actually need to work on my competence. I actually need to beef up my knowledge my like level of capability here um and then there's this third person over here who this is a person who has made themselves very competent who values competence they've um i'm picturing like a coconut they've made they, they've made themselves the coconut right like the that mineral dense nutrient dense water is in there and they don't understand why they like people they know that they have something valuable to communicate to other people. They just can't figure out how to communicate to other people. They need to tap the coconut. But like if you've ever tried to tap a coconut, it's really hard, you know? Um, like that that shell's like really, really difficult. So that's the, um, this is a person who over leans on that. They over lean, they try to make themselves in a position of authority so that people have to interact with them for something. If they, if they wanna get what they want, they're the only person who they can get it from, you know, like it or not. Whether they like them, whether they feel, whether they trust them, whether they have a warm feeling. So this is a person, the muscle they overuse is their authority, their position. They rely on that. And this might be a person as well who's in a habit of, I'm hearing it's a bad habit. Um, and this is kind of what keeps that other muscle weak is like using their position or their business in order to build relationships. Now, this person may actually run into this first person that we were talking about, who is a pretty good balance, a pretty good blend. They've gotten where they've gotten in life. This first, going back to this first person, they've gotten where they've gotten in life by being, being good at relationships and that Libra energy, it's, it's give and take, but it's, there's a focus on roles and fairness. Because if you're going to understand fairness in a situation um, here like this where where it's like business or it's authoritarian, then this person is going to want to be fair to people based on their roles. So they don't want to overburden an authority. There's This is somebody who's um, probably, even though they're a very personable person and they make a lot of friends, like if you're this person's authority or like you're... Um, somebody who provides a service for this person in a business capacity, they don't want to burden you by making you have to balance being friends with them, but also doing your job and your authority. Because if something goes wrong in any one of these arenas, right? Like that's, that's this person's social, emotional intelligence shining through. So you might be, this, this person here may be actually frustrated because they over rely on their position of authority. Actually, I think to make friends, because even when you, like when you make friends in a place where you are the authority, there's a power dynamic that's established in that business realm that then it kind of translates over to when you're hanging out, like outside of that as well. And it kind of does make people have to question whether or not they can bring up their, their, problems with you, their qualms with you that they have in a, in a, on a friend level 
And if it's going to affect them, you know, in this other way, even if it's like you assure them that it's not going to and it's not your intention to, but the fact of the matter is we all have a psychology. We all have, now there's like, you just have this kind of like negative feeling towards them just a little bit. So they don't feel like they can actually stand up for themselves. Well, this person doesn't want that. Like, like they kind of just project that out into the future that they don't want a relationship like that, you know? Um, they don't want to have to navigate those things. So I feel like there's a person here who it's like, they don't try to make friends and stuff. Like they keep their... They, they're friendly, they're nice, they're personable, but they very much keep things. Um, I'm hearing from that song, Unholy, where it's like, and that you don't know how to keep your business clean. This person knows how to keep their business clean, you know? Um, so going back to this third person that I didn't really finish talking about, they've built up like their authority, they've built up their competence, they may have like gotten some kind of credentialing or something, but they're not so good at people. They're not a people person. Um, they, and even like when they get frustrated of like, I'm trying to help you, you know, um, they're still not thinking about the other person because this person needs to learn how to tend somebody's humanness. So I do feel like in order to like get that across, and that's this like coordinate point of keeping somebody safe emotionally and mentally and everything, but then also kind of guiding them along the path, accounting for that, you know, and this person doesn't think that they should have to do that, which is why I'm either they don't, you know, they just think it's everybody else's problem, you know? Like the beast shouting, um, if she doesn't eat with me, then she doesn't eat with all. And then she doesn't eat at all, right? And she's like, I'm not coming. And he's like, then go ahead and starve. Like, that's this person where it's like, well, then I guess you're just going to burp, burp, burp. Like, you know, I guess you're not going to get what you need then. You know, and it is really cruel. And it kind of like comes out. But in reality, I think this person's taking something personally because they, their truth is that they aren't very good at people. It's a place where they feel weak and they don't. So in terms of this Shadow Bishak energy of what everybody needs this truth that nobody, everybody here has their own truth about their own weakness that they're, they're nursing here that they don't want to actually say here to this other person. I don't care what you guys think you're talking about because some of you, it's like, you might even kind of like be getting at something somewhat deep, but it's like, this is the kind of truth where it's like, and I know like a lot of you are in therapy and stuff. This, like you kind of warm up with a therapist and you're like, you know, my, my, I feel this way and I feel that way, but there's something that you want to talk to them about. And you know, you're kind of, you have to build up that relationship over the long term um, before you can like really talk about the thing. Because um, with the scorpionic energy, it's like you might talk about something that to other people might seem like it's embarrassing or like it's deep, right? But it's not the thing to you because it's like the thing that you don't want to admit to. You're embarrassed. Like you are actually embarrassed. Like to, to say this, right? That's what needs to kind of be said here. But that's where it's like, you've got to start, you've got to build up the intimacy, you've got to build up the vulnerability. And there's something deceptively simple here about this. And I think that's been your uh, experience here with each other, all of you, because there's a way that you're used to operating. That's that overuse of a certain muscle. And for each one of you, it's something different. That's that overuse of it. There's a way that you're used to operating. So um, you know that, that phrase, it's like to a hammer, everything is a nail. To somebody who is strong and authoritative, every problem is respect my authority. If something's not going their way, it's because somebody doesn't honor them as an authority, value their knowledge. That's not what's going on here. This authority person's having people problems and they're not recognizing it. The, whoever they're asking about in terms of these other positions, which I think it would be this first person, this person doesn't have a problem with their authority. I think this person is quite ready to defer to this person's authority. They don't trust this person and they can't get around it. They can't get around. It seems like you've got an agenda. It seems like you're trying to dominate me. It seems like, and I think there might've even been a, there's either a routine way of communicating where it's just not the rapport that this person wants. You know, they want the coconut. They want what's in there, but I, and there also might've been like a very specific moment in time. And I'm hearing like, that was the moment I knew where this person needed comfort. They needed, they were anxious and they needed, and not performative comfort. They needed, um, there was something here that they felt this person could have said. There was ground they could have given in terms of what they knew, in terms of this authoritative knowledge that would have been a comfort. They didn't need a pat on the back. They didn't need a, a hug in that situation. They actually needed some kind of authoritative information that this person has to calm them. And this person withheld it as maybe a power move um, or because they're just not good, you know, at that building that intimacy of like, I'm gonna give a little bit, you know? So that's where things went wrong, where this person thought, this person, I can see their intention is not, you know, 
to comfort me, to care about me. This is about power, control, something, something that I can't lean on, you know? Um, that's something that's going on here. But this authoritative figure could not um, accept that. So instead they're gonna project out that this person has a problem with their authority or doesn't see their knowledge. That's not what's going on here at all. Um, and for this first person, their interaction here with this authority figure is that this person's being a jerk. This person's intentionally withholding where I'm actually seeing this person's not good with people. They're just not, but they, they don't want to admit that. So they probably front, they probably project, they probably have gone to the management classes. And like I said, instead of going to, straight to their psychology, how do I see the world? You know, um, okay, I built myself up as this authority and I want that to be recognized, that I have a superior knowledge here in something, but I don't want to be seen like that Libra energy. Even in a business like that where you're the professional, you're, I'm hearing this very clearly, your success will be determined by how human you are. Like by, by you being able to tap that place where we're all just human beings trying to navigate this experience, that's where your help has to come from. Otherwise your help just hurts. That's a very clear, very specific message. And you don't understand that. You know, um, I'm seeing like from Aladdin, you know, when um, Iago has like the, the Sultan, like all up on those like puppet strings and he's like shoving the crackers in his mouth, shove them all the way down your throat. You want another cracker? Like, you know, it's that kind of an energy. It's like, but I was giving him crackers. He looked hungry. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, maybe he wanted like a nice cheese spread. Maybe he wanted to put the cracker in his own mouth. You know what I mean? It's like, and, and that's, ooh, that's like tapping on something here for this authority person. Maybe they wanted to put the cracker in their own mouth. Maybe they want the cracker with cheese. Maybe they want the cracker with a little bit of turkey. Maybe they don't like crackers. Maybe they're gluten-free. Like, how does this person want their cracker? That's something you have to figure out. It's making something bioavailable. It's tapping the coconut. It's not enough just to have the coconut. This person's pretty good at, at building the coconut. And they think maybe because like, okay, they've built them, themselves up. That's something that they talk about too. If you're asking about this person, I've ascended. I have built myself up, right? That should be enough. If that's not really on a soul level hard for this person. I mean, I think this person, like I said, they value competence. They're pretty smart cookie. They're always going to go in that direction. That's not hard for them. Their soul lesson is connecting with people. That's what's hard for them. That's their workout. And this person down here wants to be taken seriously. They want to be seen as an authority and that's their truth, right? So that in terms of this, <laughs> sorry, this message is kind of just flowing out. So in terms of the Shadow Bishak energy, um, this authority person over here is saying that what they need to admit is that I'm really not good with people. I want to connect with people. They may even have like a secret hidden desire to become successful based on their ability to help people, to, to genuinely connect with people and get their like message here across. They just feel like a failure or they feel like a disappointment or they feel not strong because this person wants to feel strong. They, they know they're strong and they want that to come across. So instead of just saying, you know, to whoever it is that they're asking about here, that's their key. I'm really not good with people. I'm trying my best here, but if you could really help me out, I don't mean anything by it. I know I can come off a bit pompous, a bit reserved, a bit arrogant. Um, I'm not that way at all. I do have this knowledge. I want to help you with it. Help me help you because I'm not good at this part of it. Um, you know, please help me. I'm good at this part of it. I'm going to need help with this part of it. And that is a human moment where you're building that intimacy and that vulnerability. Let's move this forward a little bit at a time for this first person here. Their shadow Bishak moment is I want to be taken seriously, but I don't trust that, you know, I've only really ever seen people who are authoritative and it feels bad when their knowledge comes out and I don't want to be that way. And I've seen people who um, are really uh, social smoothers. They're really slick talkers. You know, they don't really have anything of substance to offer, but they just spin this like beautiful web of Maya and illusion around them and they really lack substance. And I don't want to be that. And I feel like this first person would lean to one side or another where they feel like, um, they, they are more prone to one side or another, but they've had to overcome that. Um, and so they're, they're really struggling taking themselves seriously and putting themselves out there. They're really struggling with that. And I don't know what this person would say, like, um, yeah. And cause I think it depends on like, it might lean more towards what this authoritative person would say in terms of like what they think is actually getting at their truth, but isn't really, but that that's the heart of it is I am scared to put myself forward cause I don't want to be mocked or ridiculed. Um, because my confidence isn't there yet to understand that I actually do have a depth of knowledge and I actually really am good at connecting with people and, um, that people like that. 
people aren't feeling a type of way about me because this person's felt really bad in terms of bad leaders. And I feel like their guides have gotten them around these types of bad leaders in order to um, show them what they are not, you know, um, and to show them, hey, look, if this person over here really lacks depth, but can get themselves out there and like say all these things, if they can do it, then you can do it, you know? And if this person has all the knowledge, but they're unable to get it out there, well, somebody needs to be getting the knowledge out there and you're positioned to do it, you know? Now, let's talk about this person over here. I mean, the thing, their Shadabishak moment, what they, what they're trying, what they need to admit, honestly. Um, Cause I feel like this person may say things like, well, I'm just not taken seriously. You know, people need this. Likewise, I feel like these two are, it's like these two people, the second person and the third person, it's like, people should respect my authority. Like this second person here who is kind of like all show and no backup, um, they also want authority, but I feel like they're scheming around. So by some kind of social scheme. So this is reminding me of, um, I got like this person tried to scam me in a mall one time where they were like, um, uh, uh, some, some kind of like, I don't know, mentorship. They gave me a book like afterwards and I didn't want the book and they were like, okay, so like come back for the next meeting and um, you know, we'll go over like the book. So they gave me this book. So then I felt the guilt and of like, I'm not going back. I knew like the moment that I left, I was like, I was trying to kind of like finesse my way out of that situation. And I knew like that I wasn't going back there, but then I had this book. And so then it's like, they gave me the book to make me feel guilty, to bait me into coming back, knowing that I didn't want to come back and that I was inclined not to come back. And so they needed this extra thing in order to support their agenda because in and of themselves, they were scamming. They didn't have anything of real value to offer me. I knew it, they knew it. So they had to like give me that book. I've also like here on this channel, I've had people give me tips. So this is somebody who interacts with somebody's business or something with an agenda. Um, they don't they don't actually come for the service. So like in terms of my tip jar, one time I had this person give me like a hundred dollar tip, but with their channel and everything like attached to it. Again, like bringing up that guilt and shame of like, I'm basically bribing you to plug my channel because I don't feel like I'm gonna make it on my own merits. And the whole thing just like really rubbed me the wrong way. And I had to like actually sit and walk my like psychology. Like, I don't know this person anything. I didn't ask for somebody to give me money in exchange for something that's a tip jar because you value like what it is that I'm putting out there. You misusing my tip jar does not make me a bad person. And I had to like unpack that. And that person buried me psycho like psych psychologically. They just buried me under like my own guilt. And that's what this person does over here. And um, so what they need to admit to themselves is that they want power and they want admiration, but that they, unless they scheme around, and I think like to get their philosophy accepted, to get their image of themselves like put out there and expected, then they're not going to get anywhere with it. And they actually need to turn around and do the hard work like this person. And I'm kind of getting like, in terms of all of this coming together, you may have a person, like these two may feel very drawn to each other, like almost like a, a twin flame, kind of like a connection. This is, um, but in the sense of like, you have your your strengths and I have my strengths and we're gonna defer to each other to um, like kind of carry that about, right? Um, so that I can continue to over rely on this part of myself that I'm good at and nurse my weak muscle. And you can, can similarly do that for yourself, you know, but I'm hearing like, this is going to cause problems. This, this is, um, that's what this person is illuminating this third person who's going to come into this mix because they need to hear something from this person here, something specific in order to accept what it is that they're offering, this person's gonna try to offload that on this other person, on this third party. And that third party could be a business, you know, a business that's all fluff and no substance, or a person who's that way, you know? And because this this person, because they're because actually they're bad at social emotional intelligence and they're bad at, um, we all have strengths and weaknesses. I hope this doesn't come across like I'm like putting people down because I'm trying to like talk about this in a well-rounded well sense. We're all trying to, become more whole, you know, and that's just, that's just the way that I see this. So, um, you know, this person, cause they, they lack that social emotional intelligence. They may see somebody here who's really good at bullshit and they're really good at games and they're really good at schemes and they're really good at word salad. Basically they may see this person as, as being socially emotionally intelligent, but they don't, they can't even see that this person kind of lacks depth. They misapply a lot of things and they also can't see that this person here, this, um, second person, they want power for nothing, right? So they're at their peak power when they align with a person who actually has it but doesn't know how to use it. And they need this powerful person to defer 
at like a crutch in a codependent way um, to their philosophy on things um, to take their advice. But this person's advice would be very much like what I was saying um, at the beginning with Beauty and the Beast where it's like Mrs. Potts and Lumiere when they're like, tuck it in, dazzle them with your debonair wits, pay attention to your tone, like turn around. And I'm this has come out in like our readings here before too. But um, this person w likes that because just like the beast felt getting all of that information, oh my gosh, this is so much to keep um, track of. And it's like, I feel like I have to fight my own nature, which is feeding a sense of insecurity of like, I'm never gonna be able to do this. I'm not just the right person to be able to do this. This is keeping a very negative cycle in check and in, in um, in for both people here actually because this person the kindest thing to do is for this person to move away so they have to actually learn how to do something anything um you know and actually like delve into their own like actually build up some kind of substance um this second person would be triggered by this first person who does have some kind of social skills who has a different set of social philosophy that's actually potentially going to help this authoritative person here um, because then this authority person can move away from the second person. They no longer need them. They actually do transform that when they, um, and they, they, un they unlock like a different level of their own power where they don't need this person anymore. And this is very naturally going to separate because I'm getting, these two will be drawn to each other, but they're, um, it's not friendly. They're actually foes. And because of their weaknesses, they can't actually see that they're actually foes because they're, what motivates them and what they each need out of the situation is very different. This authority needs connection, love cooperation. Um, they need to not be seen as the scary monster in the corner if they're going to be able to help people. Well, this second person over here needs them to be seen as the scary monster in the corner. They need, and this person needs to, they're at their peak power when um, this person's dependent upon them for advice that is bullshit and keeping them in a sick place. And um, that other people see them as a um, intermediary between them and this, this person of power because they can't actually have a relationship with this person of power. So, this, so one of them can only be getting what they want at a time by dominating the other one. So either this person gets um, looked upon as the power and the authority that they want without actually having substance to back it up because they're basically trying to co-opt this person's power and they want to gatekeep it like in a type of way. This could be a business, okay? This could be a business um, that wants to gatekeep something here. Um, it's professionals or something like that. So take it however it resonates. Um, and then this person, this authority cannot actually be as potent and powerful as they want and need to be if they have to go through the bottleneck of this other person. So they're actually foes. They need to like split up and go their separate ways. That's what's karmic here as well. Um, and I think these two people, all they care about is like status, visibility, and position, right? Um, and they, I think historically that's where the karma comes in is they have, um, they have, I think, done some bad things to this first, first, first person over here to try and knock them out of the running in order to validate their own like positions, to sit in their own stink basically. So now that we've gone through all of that, um, Basically, every single person here is talking about frustrations and communication from their own camp, their own perspective. A lot of you are saying like literally almost the same exact thing here about each other, but it's clear that it doesn't jive. That's because of all the defense mechanisms that are going on here as well. Um, you're talking about some, so at first you felt drawn in to each other's energy. You thought it was exactly what it was that you were looking for, either because there was a, a routine, a methodology, a way of communicating that you thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be the answer. This is going to be the key. This is going to help me. And it is, but just not in the way that you think, right? You're going to do it yourself. Like that's what this is going to teach you. Um, so then as it turned out, something here was unsatisfying. It actually triggered you, it like actually brought up your anxiety. And this, like keep in mind there's different roles here. There's somebody who actually holds a position of authority and then there's somebody here who is going to that person's authority. But the mindset is different. So there's also like, you've got those two positions, you've got two mindsets as well that may or may not line up with the positions. Do you know what I mean? So you've got a person here who's very cooperative, who's very Libran. It's like, let me be fair to you. I see your position. Um, I see my position. I don't wanna make things unduly hard on you. So I'm gonna, you know what I mean? It's somebody who has that, ability to kind of navigate the situation that way. And that person may be in a position of power or they may be in the, um, 
in a position of, of receiving from somebody here who has the authority in the situation. Either way, I think this Libra person here, this first person, they will undergo a transformation in their life where they will become the power, they will become the authority, and they're going to have to learn um, how to hold boundaries, how to say no, how to, like I was saying, avoid that like guilt of, I want to be fair, like, oh, my psychology is wanting to be fair. So they may have to encounter some of these types of people who are trying to get something for nothing, basically, you know? Um, so basically it's like, there's somebody here with like, they view everything through who has the power, who has the authority, but you can have that mindset and be in the position of power, or you can be in the lower position and want to usurp somebody who has legitimate power, right? So that's going to be different for all of your situations. Um, somebody here, okay, so seen as the queen of swords, somebody who's very educated. I feel like uh, this third position person, this um, first position person could be seen as um, actually being very smart, very educated. Um, this first person is being seen as um, inaccessible um, just because they don't take themselves seriously. They don't have the confidence. They don't understand how much people value and, and really do need them. Um, so they're kind of keeping themselves tucked away and um, they're trying to keep their roles, you know, very, they want to keep their business clean. And then um, this third person here, people say about them that they're very educated, but there's not the rapport. There's not the back and forth here with this person. Um, and what they, people say about the second person is that they're conniving or that they're manipulative. Manipulative, Because even if they're not trying to do that, like they're not necessarily poorly intentioned, which I think for a lot of these people though, it's like they really don't care that they don't have something to offer. And that's something that's like bad. You know, if somebody doesn't care that they're not offering something to your life, but they're still gonna try to scheme around, that's something bad, you know? Um, Cause they don't care how that affects you. They just want theirs. So what people say about the second person is that they seem like they're casual and they seem like they know what they're talking about. But once you get to know them, there's nothing there of substance to like actually back it up. So they need to cut away from um, this person. Um, yeah. Now, in terms of like what all these people are saying about what they want, um, I think this first person is talking about safety. They want some kind of safety and they want to move slow. This authoritative person, I don't know. It's like there's a mixture here. Somebody wants to give somebody something or they, they want to offer somebody something of real value. Um, somebody here wants there to be like a long-term relationship here, something that really like grows over time or something valuable that helps somebody here over time. Somebody here wants to feel safe. Um, somebody here wants to maybe move slow. Um, yeah, so there's like, there is a confusion here and a mix up of, of what everybody wants in this situation. Now, in terms of who they're talking about, there's something here about competitors, okay? So like, for instance, this authoritative person, um, I've, I'm kind of getting that they run a business or they're in some kind of profession. So there's somebody who competitively does what they do, right? And they have the edge because I feel like other people, even though this person may be smarter um, because they're able to actually connect with people because business of all kinds and um, also just being of service, you have to be able to connect with other people. So it's like whoever this, author if you're the authority person here that I've described and you're asking about one of these other people, especially I think it would be this first person, um, then they're kind of, they maybe have gone to a competitor somebody who does what you do after they've left your care or your business. And they, they're they just saying like, here's my experience here with this other person or like, here's some of the things that they were saying, like, does that check out with you? You know, kind of a thing, like just kind of onboarding, that's like really what I'm getting. Now, if this is a love situation here for any of these people, then if you view somebody, and that it would be from your perspective. So like, if you view somebody here as a competitor, which I feel like this second person would be very prone to identifying this first person as a competitor. Um, this first person though, I just want, I'm just being honest here. If you are the second person here where it's like, there's not the substance to back it up, this first person doesn't see you as a competitor. They don't, and it's not even, um, they just don't have that mindset. Like I said, they're very Libran. They like to get along with people. Um, they like to see the value in each person. And I feel like this first person here, it's like, even if they think, well, you know, you're saying like a lot of hot air or a lot of fluff, they still like you. I think this person would still be inclined to say they like your personality, you know, even though they don't want to go to you for any advice or like anything of like, again, like any knowledge or anything like that. They still like your personality. You're fun to be around, you know? Um, and in certain circumstances, it might be okay. Like if you do something where it's like leadership focused, but it's not maybe like, you know, advice giving or something like that. I don't know like what that would be, but it's like, 
this person does think that you have a nice personality and that's probably what they're talking about. Um, yeah, everybody here is um, talking about their ascent. So this authority person is talking about their ascent, their climb, all the things that they've learned and why doesn't somebody just respect my authority, right? Because there's more to life. There's so many moving parts to life. That's what makes life a challenge for all of us. This person just only wants to be able to rely on their position. And this could even be like as a parent, you know? Um, because at some point, like, parenting just overlaps with like, yeah, like you're the parent and they're the child, but there's also this side to every single human interaction. This is true of business you know, of somebody who's providing a service and somebody who's the customer. This is true of like a fiduciary relationship. Yes, there's that, but at, at the base level, we're all just humans, you know? And I think like whenever you see a really good parent, that's what they understand about their kids. Like, yeah, I, I've gone through these, I, I got potty trained before you, so I know it's a struggle, but like, you know, let me show you how to become potty trained, but we're like, we're the humans. I wanna help you navigate this on a human level. You're gonna have your own struggles. We're gonna to have to talk through certain things. I don't just want you to accept my worldview. Cause there's somebody here and it, it's these two people. It's the second and the third person here it could be very evangelical in terms of like the way, not not that there there's necessary religion involved here, although there could be. In terms of their mindset, they're, they try to be persuasive. You know, they may have even learned tips or tricks and techniques in order to persuade, but persuasion is a form of dominance. That's what these two people don't understand. They want to dominate people. You only have to dominate people when you can't just connect with people because we all are just walking each other home. We all have like different things that are valuable. You know what I mean? That's what this first person understands. I don't have to dominate you. And if, if I don't have what you need, Godspeed, you know, go, go on your way, find where, where you need to go because we're all here for different reasons and to interact with different people. And like this person doesn't want to, this first person doesn't want to try to take what's not theirs by any means. But these two people, I think there's something evangelical about the way they talk. And the thing about that is that evangelism, that's all about tips and tricks and strategies, right? About how to get somebody to come to your side of things. But psychologically speaking, having an evangelical mindset puts you above somebody else. Because even though like, take evangelical Christians as an example, even though like a lot of evangelical Christians, when you get them talking one-on-one, -on -one, they say, no, I, I love and respect everybody else. I think that I'm not above anybody else. But then if they actually get to a place, especially where they love you, they're going, because they think you're going to hell, right? Which is not a nice thing to think about somebody just because you don't believe what they believe because you don't stack the world up the way they do. They don't think you have a right to have your own experiences and make up your own mind. They've automatically put themselves above you where you're less than them for whatever reason. They don't have to necessarily think you're stupid or ill-intended, but they've put themselves above you. People feel that. People feel that. And that's something that's actually not a Christian way of being. That's the hypocrisy. So this is for all these people involved. Well, for these, for the second and third person, it's a call to clean up your own hypocrisy. It's a call to take radical ownership of the ways in which you contribute to these outcomes. Because there's something about each of these two people that they don't want to look at or acknowledge um, in themselves that has a huge bearing on outcome. So again, like with the second person, it's like, um, people just don't see how smart I am or how capable or how like intelligent, you know, um, I am or some, I don't know, something like that. And with this authoritative person, it's like people don't see and respect my authority. That's what like draws these two people together. It's like very, if they work at the same thing or that's what draws this person to this business or, you know, um, but this first person, they are afraid of their own power. I heard they're afraid of their own shadow, like literally shadow work. And their shadow is one or both of these two people of being the authority and not caring or um, being full of hot air. But this first person's neither, but I think this person's just riddled with doubts and they haven't been able to get themselves out, but they, that's their process. And the more that they do that slow and steady wins the race, they need, this first person needs to challenge that boundary a little bit at a time, kind of like exposure therapy, but like maybe working with a therapist, I feel like for POW1 would be very helpful. Somebody can help them challenge that boundary in a safe way. Having an, what's sad is that for pile number one, having an authority who can help them push their boundaries in a safe way while honoring, like that's what, like a little bit at a time. Because I think this authority person just wants it all, you know? I did the thing, now open the door, you know? Um, and just like in that Beauty and the Beast story, I feel like I'm jumping all around, but this is because this, this is a hard place to kind of navigate. Um, 
you know, with the Beauty and the Beast thing, um, you know, he, he puts some skin on the game for her, doesn't he? He he protects her when she's actually trying to escape him and the wolves are coming out like he actually protects her he's gonna get nothing out of it so she can see a different side of him and then she tends him and even though they're still kind of bickering when he wakes up and but she's taking care of him that's what kind of like starts it in a different direction you know um yeah, so I know this has already been a long reading and probably nobody is still listening, but I do just want to tap into the um, psychological defense mechanisms. If you need to take a break or something, um, if you feel like this information is valuable, I'm seeing three defense mechanisms in particular. We've already talked about the first one, which is projection, which is the act of attributing certain qualities or characteristics to another person um, that do not actually exist in that other person. But it, I want to link it to the second one that I'm seeing, which is externalization. Because externalization is kind of akin to projection, but it's like you want to offload the accountability and the responsibility, which is why for every single person involved here, extreme ownership is the key. Sure, like, you know, other people are doing things. I've, I feel like I've just described it. Like every single one of these people, none of them is perfect, right? None of them doesn't have a struggle, but the way that you are going to deal with this situation and actually start to get traction and actually make amends and reconciliation here is, is through owning your part of it. That's like, um, and I would lay my armor down if you said you'd rather love than fight. That's a song. Um, it's a really beautiful one. But I would lay my armor down if you said you'd rather love than fight. Um, you know, like, Somebody here, it's like, you lay your armor down. No, you lay your armor down, you know? When somebody, like, just lays their armor down, that's what's going to, like, change it. And I feel like it shouldn't be this first person as well because, like I said, um, these people have done heinous things in past lives to this first person. They do need to maintain their sovereignty and their boundaries and say, I'm not going to be spoken to like this third person. <laughs> no, you need to fix that. Like, this, you know, or... You know, I don't know. It's like, I just feel like it shouldn't, be. it could be, don't listen to me. So yeah, this externalization of responsibility that like by projecting certain traits and qualities onto each of these other people, it's so whoever's doing the projecting can actually externalize their responsibility in the, the situation, what they contributed to cause the outcome and what they can do to actually make amends, right? Now, the other one, I feel like this authority figure would be especially prone to this is rationalization. And rationalization is funny. I actually learned this bit from the holistic gamer as well, because he talks about like sciencey people, people who are like brainy and they think, oh, I'm not actually emotional. That is bullshit. Science has actually proven that it's bullshit. We're all emotional beings and it's actually a deficit. If you think you're not emotional, you are horribly emotional, like behind the scenes, not I'm, now I'm being dramatic, not horribly emotional. You're just as emotional as anybody else. You're just um, maybe alexithymic where you're not able to like actually pick up on it. You're actually, it's going undetected. That's all it is. You can't overcome emotionality. There's a, it's a breakage, right? Um, and uh, I wish I could remember the video, but just know like he's got, he like talk, walks you through like the different studies and stuff. It's really interesting over there on like the healthy gamer. And he, he has a really good video on alexithymia as well, um, which is just the inability to, pick up on your own emotions. So um, like I, there could be rationalization going on here from each one of these camps, but I feel like this this authoritative figure that would be most prone to this where they're saying, I'm not actually emotional in this situation, therefore my logic can be most trusted. But the act of rationalizing as a defense mechanism, I bet that's something that this person relies on quite heavily, is when actually your emotional system takes over your logical methodolo methodological functioning in order to craft a airtight argument that nobody can actually um, penetrate or get into because it is actually emotional, right? So this is where we talk about confirming your own biases. And I'm gonna use the twin flame thing here, right? Like just a, as an example, because twin flame, that's a very emotional kind of an experience. I feel this huge emotion here towards this other person and I cannot explain it. It just like goes straight to my psyche. So I'm going to rationalize that feeling to, to mean that it has to equate to a certain outcome. Instead of just leaving it open-ended and saying, this is really interesting. I need to kind of like explore this. Clearly what, what the truth of that is, is that I'm having these very strong emotions, right? Instead, like you're rationalizing it and you're saying, that means that it's this, that means that it's that, right? Um, or again, like, I don't know. I don't know how this person would be rationalizing, but it could be saying, they could be saying, that, okay, well, these other people are emotional and I'm not emotional, so therefore it's not my problem. All the while, this person is emotional. They're feeling insecure. They're feeling attacked, maybe. They're feeling inadequate, 
This person maybe has an inferiority, inferiority complex, but that they're trying to overcome by not budging. And then by thinking everybody else, else needs to come kiss the ring. Of course nobody is, because it feels like shit to be, and be involved with a person like that. And this person's not gonna actually, I would lay my armor down if you... And that, so it says a lot about this person's values. All they want is to connect with people, but they want to connect with people under certain parameters, under them being deferred to. They don't actually want to, here's what it is. This person doesn't actually want to be treated as an equal. No, they don't. They want to have the, the card. I wonder if this person has not been just trampled. Like they got their heart trampled is what I'm hearing. Yeah, it's broken. This person has been trampled, their self-esteem has been trampled like early on in their life. So they're, they're overcompensating, but it's that fear of turning around and saying, I still am that scared little kid. So any, therefore any interaction that I involve in, I don't want to make myself vulnerable. So therefore I've got to make myself the authority in any situation. And I won't interact with people unless I'm better than them or unless I'm their authority or unless I want something from them. That way I always have the excuse and the fallback of my own rationalization that I'm actually superior. This is why this person would get involved with a person like the second person as well, because they would see this person as less than them. They would say that they, they see this, what I've just described in this other person, um, this almost over-reliance on creating an emotional atmosphere and they can control this person in their mind. They, these two people think they can control each other. So this is a mess. This is a real, real mess, but it's just because everybody here is trying to offload their baggage. So pile number one is saying, I don't want to connect with my power. I don't want to make people feel as bad as I have felt interacting with like people like these two people. I can't be responsible for that. I love people too much. So here, I will defer to your authority, which this person doesn't see. This person's very ready to defer to their authority, but they just can't, which is why their spirit guides have gotten them involved here with this person because it encourages this person to step up into their own authority, right? Um, yeah, and this person wants the authority, but just can't get there of their own accord. So they have to scheme, maybe even be married to somebody here. Yeah, they want to be seen like the builder, but they're really the saboteur. That's what this, this is a story of who is the builder and who is the saboteur of your own life. That's what this is. You are the builder and the saboteur of your own life. And unless you understand that, unless you take both in your hands, then this is this situation will forever be confusing. Which brings me to the last part that I wanted to talk about, right? I know this has been like an insanely long reading. And again, nobody's probably listening, but amends is heavily on your mind here, I think, whoever you are and whoever you're asking about. Um, to amend something means to make a change that makes it better. So again, especially if you're the second or third person here, you may want words exchanged, a very two-dimensional form of making amends. And that's a form of dominance. You want this person to defer to your authority. You want them to apologize, you know, or you want, you want to make amends as I think kind of as a form of domination. Um, because it would validate you. It would validate your positions. So until you change that in yourself, that can't happen. Even if it does happen in a performative way, the underlying issues are still present. So spirit wants you to understand that it is you who does not make amends here with this person. You're externalizing responsibility. So if and until you are able to look at yourself honestly and with radical ownership and therefore connect yourself with your own power, Connect yourself with the truth of you in the moment, not what happened in the past, where you're going in the future, and you need to strategize in order to get this certain place in the future. You need to behave like a certain way, blah, 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 bullshit. Pile two, bullshit. You need to stop it, knock it off, and take, I'm sorry if this is harsh, you need to take radical ownership. I'm also hearing that maybe nobody has told you this. Now this authority person would have made damn well and sure that nobody could speak to them this way. Nobody could speak to them in the way that I'm speaking to them right now in this reading. Knock it off. Because they don't want to be held accountable. And I think this person feels needled by that. <clears throat> um, to reconcile, that's another very karmic word, right? And I'm thinking about um, 
because how everybody here in this situation is basically saying the same things about one another, but it's so clear from an outsider's perspective that like all these stories don't exactly add up. There's conveniently like holes, you know, that's coming through and that's like the state of delusion. And I'm like the Buddha, like the way that the Buddha described delusion is that we kind of make up stories. That's this process of externalizing and rationalizing. We make up stories to go with like certain events. So we have to turn around, we have to deal with our own stories. We have to kind of dismantle them. We have to live in them now. We have to connect with our own power. We have to have our radical ownership over ourselves. And um, so the process of reconciling, you know, think about reconciling a checkbook. It's like you're taking your own accounting of your spending and you're comparing it to the bank's accounting of your spending. And where they don't line up, you really have to investigate and get to the bottom of like, what happened here? Did you make a mistake? Did the bank make a mistake? Um, and then you have to make the changes where they need to happen so that it brings everything back into balance, back in harmony. And that's where this radical ownership, especially for these two, um, you know, you really have to think, what did I do to contribute to the outcome here? And go about changing that. That's the process of reconciliation. And on an energetic level, if you want to manifest this person back, which you have to, this is beautiful because manifesting another human being has to, it has to be what they want too. Well, this person, I think energetically, because I'm kind of picking up on it, they made it very clear that if and until you make these changes, they're not interested in reconciling with you. Not at all, because this is a real one. You got a real one here. They don't want some bullshit exchange with you. They don't want to be around you unless you've make, made these amends in yourself. And some of you, that's part of what this draw is to this person is you actually do want to be around them. Maybe that's the first, that's the, the first time I don't know for you where it's like, I actually, I actually give a shit about pile number two. I actually do want them in my life. I actually realize that they brought value and that I'm feeling the deficit, but you could be even projecting that outwards where you want them to feel the deficit because you, there's only one dad, right? Only you can be their dad. So unless they want to play ball, unless they want to grovel, unless they want to kiss the ring, unless they want to accept whatever bullshit behavior that you're going to offer them. Well, then I guess they're going to be without a dad and that's cruel, isn't it? You know? But this person is like, I'd have, I wouldn't have a dad either way. You know, I wouldn't have an advocate either way. I wouldn't have an authority either way. And I, I can just look at the truth of that and deal with the, the harsh truth. That is that scenario that you have put me in, but blame me for. So you just have to go through the process. I'm hearing of uncoupling. Some of you need to uncouple yourself from one of these two people for sure. Because it's just holding you both back. This is like a crutch that doesn't want to get thrown away. Um, and also, I would lay my armor. I just keep hearing that. If you said you'd rather love than fight. Um, and um, in terms of the Shadow Bishak, like when you get back in this person's presence, it's radical vulnerability. You're starting it, you're the one initiating it. You're not any of this like weird trickery bullshit trying to strategize things to get your way you're saying you know i'm really afraid of my own power i was trying to defer to you but you really make me fucking nervous you know there's something you said there was something you did i can't get past it you know or i want to defer to you but you just don't have any knowledge <laughs> you know um or listen i want to have a relationship with you but i'm just not good at people I'm, I'm insecure. I'm hearing I'm horribly insecure. I, I feel inferior and I really like you and I really want to make this work. But I also, I want you to see me as somebody who's strong and powerful and as the authority. And I'm afraid that if I show you this side to me where I'm weak and I'm less practiced, this is like a Mr. Darcy person, you know, I'm afraid that you're not going to respect me because I've been disrespected in the past. And the only way that I've found that I can get around that disrespect is by beefing myself up. I hope you can understand. If not, I'm just proud of myself for putting myself out here like this. Right? Or this person, listen, I really fucked up. I was scheming around trying to get you to kiss my ring. I wanted to be the authority and I didn't actually really have a lot to offer you, but I was trying to hide that from you. And I am in a program now and I am, I'm reading every night in this, this, in terms of like this topic that I'm interested in, that I realize I've actually, um, hurt a lot of people with by not being honest and upfront about my lack of skills or knowledge. 
So, um, or even for bullying you out of a, a role that you rightfully earned in order to pair up with this authority figure in some way, to work with them um, and taking a spot that they had no right taking, you know? Like in terms of, if this is like a company, those are the kinds of conversations you should be having and if not, just shut your mouth. Like that's what I'm hearing. If not, just shut your mouth and stop worrying about it because you're not wanting to actually do the work here. This is a deceptively simple connection. You think that you can just approach this person the way that you always have approached other people, wherever you are on the field here, and you just can't. If you're this first person, you have to engage with your power because these people will run you over. All they want is your, your deference and your, your power in the situation. If you're the second person, you think you can just bullshit your way here, especially with this first person, you may be able to fool this like authority figure into, you know, but if you think you can bullshit this first person, you just can't, they see right through it. If you're this authority figure and you think that you can, um, you know, if you think that these people don't see that you don't have like strength in terms of communication, you're just wrong. This second person is gonna use it to their advantage in order to partner with you, to get you to buy into their own philosophy. Um, to get you to come to advice so that they can kind of keep you sick. And they may even want to marry you with the Hierophant here, have a kid with you in order to trap you, bind you. Um, or that could be metaphorical in a work sense. Or, um, you know, uh, this first person can see that, that you are after authority, that you're not trying to have a good rapport with them. Yeah, so, okay, I've talked for forever. Um, maybe let's get some messages here. We'll pull messages maybe for each one of these. I'm sure nobody's listening to this, but listen to my listen to my determination. I'm just still out here plugging away. Please li uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're still watching this. Okay, so yeah, I just pulled for up here. I'm playing games on purpose. Reach out to me, please. They want to strategize to get this person to reach out to them. Love will keep us together. And they call it love here with this person. Because I think they genuinely do have a soft spot for, for this first person. That's kind of the way I think this goes here. I'm getting lost in the memories. I want to be more than friends. They are not you. Um, one more. You found out something about me. Yeah, that's like they're aware that you detect something here. Um, and this person kind of lies to themselves, I think, because they, they want you to reach out to them. They want you to go back. And, um, okay, let's see. For this first person, my intentions can be selfish at times. This is this person's shadow side. What happens if they go after what it is that they want? Which these two people, that's, these two people represent their shower, shadow side. One of them more so than the other. But um, what happens if my intentions can be selfish at times, you know? What else? They may even have like, they want like, it, it's supposed to bring out their selfishness because they could want the authority here of this person. They want to be taken seriously or they could want the position here of this person even though they um, know that they don't deserve it. It's like this person is kind of supposed to see in these people things that they have um, or things that they want for themselves. But I think that where this first person can get really caught up is they, they can't separate out like, okay, this person has it by illegitimate means. So if I have it, does that make me illegitimate? You know? Um, or this person has the authority, but they're kind of a difficult person to deal with. So if I go through the process of getting myself like credentialed or like getting my authority, is that going to ruin what I love about me? My softness, my sweetness? No, it's not. I keep writing and deleting messages. I'm kind of getting this in this person's mind. This is a person who's a thinker and they're trying to like, um, they may actually be trying to reach out, but they shouldn't. This is a person who I think shouldn't actually. I hope you're not with someone else. I'm talking about you to others. This is a processor. I, I don't think they're um, talking to a lot of people, but they could be, again, talking to a therapist or um, someone at work. Not now. If you let me, I'll take care of you. I ran away. But this person is kind of recognizing that something's got to give here. And they're right about that. This is the person, this 
first person here, they are right. Something does have to give here. These two people have karmic retribution that they need to make up for with this uh, first person. And this first person has karma that they need to resolve with themselves. Because if they are, I think this is a person who could Susie Cream Cheese people. They could think, because I'm well-intentioned, these other people are well-intentioned. Because I come from a place of cooperation, these other people um, come from a place of cooperation. That's not true. So they need to detect when somebody is not the way that they appear to be on the surface and they need to respond to that. And if that means moving away, way. This is a person who needs to keep themselves safe because they didn't in the past um, with these two people. I think they um, bought, I'm hearing they bought their bullshit. I've said bullshit like a number of times in this reading. But it's very fertile, you know, because we, we put that on crops and stuff, you know, it's very fertile. So this is a ripe, this is ripe for improvement. Okay, I've liked you for a really long time. This is the second person over here. I'm feeling overwhelmed. This person really does like people um, who have knowledge or skills, so they might really like this first person or this third person for that. Um, and be, it's because they like to equate themselves with that, even though they don't have it and they feel like if they're in the presence or vicinity or if they're partnered up in some way, shape or form, or especially if they're given authority over these types of people um, in some way, either, I, I am kind of getting like through marriage and having a child, they um, try to dominate somebody who has like this kind of, power to them um but it also could just be in terms of getting people to accept their philosophy it gives them a sense of power i just keep hearing that the battle's in your hands now i would lay my armor down if you said you'd rather love and fight but this is something needs to be demonstrated and none of this like double speak kind of a thing you know Because this first person is inclined towards double speak to avoid connecting with their own power and kind of maybe telling these people what for, you know? Um, they're making excuses. They're kind of giving them a way out instead of saying, you really hurt my feelings and you really suck and you need to clean up your own corruption, <laughs> you know? I'm feeling overwhelmed. This person is feeling overwhelmed. This second person I think should feel overwhelmed, like probably the most overwhelmed because I think this is the hardest one where it's like, you actually do have to um, get a degree. You have to go to school. You have to, you have to put the effort in and you have to do it consistently over time. And that's not going to be easy, you know? Um, uh, yeah, I, I really do. I think they do feel like kind of overwhelmed in the face of that, in the face of these two people's knowledge and skill set. And some part of them shuts down and um, makes these two people like very surfacey, very two-dimensional. And it's not that there has to be three people involved. I just don't know who, where you are in this scenario. And keep in mind, like these, these people, the, these energies, they could be a business, you know? This could be um, an authoritative business that it's all about the science and the numbers, but you've got people here, maybe somebody who doesn't have the skill set to work there, but they're trying to front it. And you have somebody here who is more well-rounded than this degree program or this, you know, allows them to be. All right, I'm kind of like feeling over this. I'm kind of tapping out of this. Um, I definitely feel like this is the second person's energy. They just kind of like get overwhelmed when they're presented with substance or like depth or, um, and then they just sort of tap out, but they word salad. I've been up all night thinking about you. I feel connected to you. And you have to watch that kind of language with this person because saying I feel connected to you, there's nothing in that, is there? There's no substance in that. I feel connected to you. Okay. It's, that's not even saying like, I like this about you. I like that about you. I'm very drawn in by that. You know, I'm very intrigued by this. I haven't really been able to figure out that about you, you know, or I've been up all night thinking about you. Like this is a person who will say things like, I've been up all night thinking about you. I've liked you for a really long time and I'm feeling overwhelmed, but they really haven't actually given you much information. That's like, I feel like who this person kind of is. I've been trying to distract myself from my feelings. Please don't go. You are a great friend. Yeah. Because this person recognizes it. And this person has low social emotional intelligence as well, even though I think that they try to get hip with the lingo and the jargon and stuff, when they actually try to use it, it's clear to anyone with depth and that's where this authority might not be so hip and on the same page, but it's like, it's kind of clear to anybody who has a genuine depth of knowledge in an area that this person does not have that. 
I'm hearing the word charlatan. So this person can really get taken in by this person as a charlatan because they, they both have low social emotional intelligence just in their own ways. And this person has high intelligence and high, um, I'm hearing aptitude. This third person has high aptitude. Um, I am actually hearing high charisma and high um, potential for leadership. They're just afraid. I feel like this person, one and three, are like ugly duckling figures where there's something about them that felt small and these two people are talking about their ascent in some way. So pile number one is like, I got out of something and I am not going back. And they've identified pile number three as having a business, having a skill set that can help transport them, help change them. But it, it wasn't what they thought because the communication's bad and they can't tap that coconut. Um, and the coconut has no problem, doesn't understand that it needs to be tapped. And yeah, so anyways, I'm, I'm done talking. Uh, and, and of course, this, this first person is talking about their ascent here. So I hope that was helpful. You guys, if you're still here watching this pile number two, there's a lot going on in the situation and I feel like it all amounts to some kind of Bermuda Triangle. And if you're feeling confused in navigating this, just know it's because you're trying to lean on a muscle that you overuse. That's why your guides have put this person in your path is because it's deceptively simple. You think you, if you are leaning on a muscle that you overuse, you are going to wrongly think that this person is complicated, that this situation is complicated, that it's, it's your magnum opus. It's something you're going to have to really throw a lot of your skills at in order to try and, um, unlock this person. It's deceptively simple. It's all you have to do is switch the muscle that you're using. That's all it is. That's all that's required. This person, it's not that they don't like, this person's like, I don't know why they don't like me. I'm such a nice person. I'm such a lovely person. I'm such a sweet person. Um, they, there's a lack of, they just, um, this, whoever you're with likes people with depth, likes people with knowledge. They, they, it's kind of like, yeah, a, a lot of people are nice. A lot of people have charisma even, you know, but where's the depth? Switch the muscle you're using, right? Um, and maybe you do have depth in another arena. It's just not the arena that you're connecting with this person in, you know, this authority, they're over leaning on that authority to navigate their relationships, switch into your relationship mindset, your genuine, like just don't worry about the tips and tricks and strategies. That's you're still in your power mind, actually create space, actually become receptive. Just go inside and just lay your armor down. Just breathe out. You don't feel like you have to even say anything. Don't try to over fix anybody, you know, or over apply your skills. You could, you know, it's like you ever make, make dough and it's like, don't over need the bread. Don't over need the bread, especially with this pile number one person. And with this pile number one person, it's deceptively simple because you just need to step. Power is the only language these two people understand. So you just need to step up into your power because I think you're trying to demonstrate receptivity to these people, but you're just going to get, you're just going to get overlooked or you're going to get walked on. And then in their confusion, they're going to blame you for everything. And that's probably your experience with them in past lives or in this one. That's what I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, please like the video and um, consider joining my Patreon because we do these like very long in-depth readings um, on a really regular basis and we get into some really interesting topics over there that you can vote on um, on Patreon. So thanks for watching. Bye guys.
pile number three. What is this person saying about you? Okay, man, this is another hard one for me to describe here. Um, okay, but put it to you this way. You know how, like, as human beings, we are nuanced, complex, multifaceted, shades of gray creatures, all of us at all times, okay? Well, I'm going to have to say something here at the outset that's very reductive and it might even seem overly simplified just to communicate this message as clearly as I possibly can. Ready? Here it comes. <laughs> so you could be the positive person here in this situation or you could be the negative person here in this situation from any position here on the field. Likewise, you can be dealing with the positive person here in this situation, or you could be dealing with the negative person here in this situation who could be playing any position here on the field. It's always really nice in a tarot reading when everything just kind of lines up. So it's like, okay, this person is playing this role, is having this feeling, is thinking these things, is saying these things, is doing these things, right? And it all just kind of lines up. It's really clear who it is that you're talking about and like the moves that they're kind of making. Well, this... It, this reading, it's not like really shaking out that way. So I can't just tell you, okay, like, you know, your boss is ill-intentioned. Your friend is positively intentioned because for somebody else who is watching the same reading, their boss is positively intentioned and their friend is negatively intentioned, even though like all of the rest of this really does check out and believe you, me, it matters here. It matters here who is positively intentioned and who is negatively intentioned here in this scenario. I kind of feel like karmically speaking, this is one big game of pin the tail on the asshole, which is not a fun game. <laughs> and I'm laughing in solidarity because I've played it a few times myself. Okay. So um, this is probably like a very frustrating um, situation here. Not only that, but it is a tenant here. It is a quality of this situation that you find yourself in where there is a positive person or influence and there is a negative uh, person or influence. That's just the way of it. And what I mean in terms of like qualifying these, I'm going to keep stick with people, right? By qualifying these people as positive or negative is in terms of their intentions, it is in terms of their intentions because you can have a negatively intended person who does positive things, but they do it for selfish reasons because they want to be seen in a certain light. They want praise. Um, you know, they, they maybe they feel like it, it uh, because it casts them in a certain light, it can get them around people who can do the favors for them that they want. And you know what I mean? It builds trust where maybe there shouldn't be. There's You can, you can be a negatively intended person and, and do positive behaviors. Similarly, you can be a positive person and do seemingly negative behaviors, right? Where you have to say no, draw a boundary, um, call somebody out because it's the right thing to do because it's the truth of the situation. And you don't like damn dirty liars, right? Like maybe that's, maybe that's all it is, right? So I mean this in terms of their intentionality in the situation and intentionality specifically here towards their target. Now, that, that's going to vary depending on your situation. Because if it's just the dyad here, you and this other person, right? Then the target is the positively intended person. And the negative person is the one targeting them, right? But it also could be in this scenario where there's a third person, like a third party, that each of these, that the positive person and the negative person each have relationship with and relate to, but in a very different way and in, in the quality, the like vibrationally speaking of their love um, and of their intentions towards this target person uh, is very, very different, just qualitatively different. Um, so however that is resonating, right? Um, what I mean by that is this positively intended person when it comes to the target. And I would say, even if it's this dyad where it's like just the two of you and you're the positively intended person and you're being targeted by a negative person, I still would say that this holds true for you in this situation. With a positive person, um, you know, in, in terms of the target, they want what's best for the target in a true, genuine, holistic way. It's like, of course, I want you to be happy. I want you to live the life that you want, um, but I want you to be happy, healthy, and safe. And sometimes just giving in and giving somebody what it is that they want unquestioned and unchecked, that doesn't always mean that that person is going to end up safe and healthy, does it? Especially if you get sucked in I just heard by a moron, if you get sucked in by some kind of like predator, you know, who's trying to take advantage of you, who's trying to corrupt you, you may get what you want in that situation because somebody's playing you, but you're going to end up hurt, right? That's what I mean. There could be a positive person here who's got to question somebody who may have to not give in on a certain issue or something like that. That very well could be happening, right? So, but they really truly care about the target and what's best for them. 
Now this negative person, this negatively intended person doesn't. They're a very selfish person. They want the target to get with the program. They'll say, do, or be anything to get the target to go along with their program, even if it means hurting their soul, hurting their heart, um, ruining their um, other important relationships, like for the target. This person doesn't care so long as they get what it is that they want, that negative person right? But they'll have to put on a convincing mask in order for that to occur, which probably does not include, I really don't care about you. Probably doesn't come across that way, right? So you're dealing with a tricky, tricky person here in regards of this, this negative person, right? Now, another quality of this dynamic is that this positively intended person and this negatively intended person, they see each other very, very clearly. And that's something to understand. Um, so, and I, I'm hearing like, Right, so this positive person sees the negative person for the user that they are. And I'm hearing the word grifter. You know, they're a grifter. Um, and they see that very clearly. And I'm hearing the jig is up, right? But this negative person also sees the positive person very clearly, meaning they see that this positive person genuinely cares about the target, whether it's themselves or whether, you know, and their own well being, or whether it is like a project or you know, a company or whether it's like this other person that they both relate to, they can see that this person genuinely does care about them. And so they see that the negative person sees the positively intended person here as an obstacle, as an obstacle that they need to disarm and dismant, like move. Okay. Um, and they're behaving that way because this negative person is, I'm telling you, they are good. They are deceptive. They, um, they get out in front of things. They craft a narrative. This is a person who uses like emotive language, um, controlling language in order to like frame something out. They want to control how they're seen in a situation. They want to control the frame. They want to control the narrative of how every person in this dynamic is. That's why they have the ability. That's kind of what I want to get across here. They have the ability to try to make a positive person out into to project out all their negative intentions and their negative traits and make the positively intended person seem like they are the negatively intended person when they're really not, right? So it matters here, like who is who in, in this situation. Another very frustrating thing is that this negative person will not give it up ever. They will not, if this person succeeds, um, in, cause I'm getting kind of like a predator that sneaks into a herd in order to like grab a gazelle and like drag it off into the forest. They're never going to let it go. They're never going to let their target go. Right. But also in terms of their act, their facade, this is a person where you can catch them. Like you can catch them in a lie. You can catch them doing something wrong. And this person will double down on their lie and they will, um, They'll just, they'll, they'll try to be like a slippery fish and just like slip out of it anyway, like make excuses, try to excuse their behavior, right? But that's kind of my experience here with this tarot reading. Remember when I said like, it's nice when everything just lines up and you know exactly who is who. There's disfluencies around this person. This is where like this negative person, this manipulative person, that's where everything around them just gets blurry. There's all these disfluencies, nothing makes sense, right? And they have to kind of be doing this proactively where they have to plant doubts, um, in people's head about people who are truth tellers about them, people who see them very clearly. And that is absolutely what we got going on here. Like whether or not, um, so that could be why you're asking about, you know, what is this person saying about you, you know? Because if you're the positive person, you feel like this negative person's smear campaigning you, and they are. Um, and if you're the um, negative person, then you wanna know what the positive person is saying about you. Because either you wanna gloat at the fact that, you know, you took somebody from them or something like that. Um, and you want to get your high of supply off of that. Um, or you want to be able to uh, get out in front of anything that they may say that, that they may reveal here about your own truth here, right? So, um, okay, now moving on from like that kind of backdrop of what is going on. Um, there's two specific scenarios that I'm picking up on here. And your situation may I think for most of you, it'll fall into one of these two categories, but even if yours doesn't, it'll probably follow like a similar dynamic to what I'm picking up on here in these two scenarios. So the first one is that um, this is like a family situation. There's a family dynamic here, you know, parents, kids, like the nuclear family, but these would be adult children. Like everybody here is grown, right? Um, it may involve uh, extended family, grandparents, cousins, but I think there's a focus here on nuclear family. Um, 
maybe specific members or member of the nuclear family or the nuclear family here as a whole. But what happened in this situation, I think, is that there was an outside force, and this outside force was very different than this family in some kind of obvious way. But this obvious way translates down into values and like mindset, maybe even character. Um, it, it, it's like not a superficial difference here, like between this person and the this original family. And basically it's like this person I'm getting kind of like met one of these adult children in the family and their influence is such that that adult child is no longer an active, productive, healthy member of this family for whatever reason, right? Now this outside influence could be a friend, could be a love interest. It could be somebody that married one of these adult children here. It could be either of those things, right? Um, but what I meant earlier by you can be the negative person or you can be the positive person or you could be relating to the negative person or the positive person from any position on the field is that, um, you know, if you're a member of this nuclear family, it could be that this nuclear family or a member of this nuclear family is the negative force, you know, say they were like very underhanded. They are very manipulative. They are very, um, I want to say the word um, A B U S. I, B, E. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube. So stupid. Um, but yeah, like they could have been that way. Really um, terrible. Honestly, just terrible. They could have, they could have been a member of this nuclear family. And so this outside force, um, I can't imagine that you would be in this kind of a setup and not have an idea already that somebody here is really bad um, in terms of their behavior. But you know, this outside force basically, then in that scenario, they shone a light on it. Um, they validated this person, they helped this person leave their troubled family situation here, in which case this is a very good thing. But both people in this scenario could be saying like kind of the same story, you know, it's just one of them's true and one of them's false, describing that, that similar event, right? Um, but it could also be that um, this outside force that came in and met the grown adult child, whether it was a friend, a lover, a husband or a wife kind of a figure, to remove them from this family, it could have been, this is kind of the classic abuser scenario that we think about. Abusers have to isolate you from your family and friends. That way um, nobody can call them out. They don't really have a rival, you know. Um, they have to, like I said, disarm that person. So it could be that it goes that way as well, where actually you've got a nuclear family that probably isn't perfect. Our families never are, but they are well-intentioned. And sometimes we just have competing needs. That's a normal thing for all humans to work through. But what's gone on here from one side or the other, that goes way beyond that. Whether it's a family member who has done it or whether it is, um, and it's very well thought, it's clever. And um, somebody here is really, really has to focus on managing facade, managing face, getting somebody to buy into their scenario. Now, the other specific scenario that I'm getting, it's similar dynamics, but it could be something here with a leader and, um, somebody who's in a group. And I think I'm gonna confuse myself if I go into this, but it's basically similar, where there's a leader here, there's like maybe an established kind of a group. And it could be that you had a person who came in um, who was very different. They had just like a different agenda altogether, didn't really like belong there. And they did it intentionally here in order to usurp this leader, right? Or it could be there's this really negative leader person here and there, you had a person enter this group who's very different than these other people. And so because of that, they were able to see the toxicity here in this like leader person, right? Um, and, and so because of that, they like left the situation, but kind of was able to like blow the whistle here or this leader is like afraid that they will. So they have to get out in front and ruin, you know, they have to defame this person. They have to cast doubt upon this person's character. Because remember I said, that's a quality of this, this situation, this dynamic, these two people can see each other very clearly. They know exactly who is who here in this situation, whoever, whoever this is. For some of you unlucky souls where you are dealing with somebody who is like super negative and your spirit team is really trying to help you out, you're gonna have this, you could have some overlap here where, where um, like they say it starts out as one of this, these family situations in either way, in either direction. And you're doing a lot of your praying and it's like, man, this person is really under this person's spell, you know, or they, they like ba 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 ba. And then spirit is going to find maybe kind of like a pile number two person, like the per per perfect person on some kind of soul level. Look, would you be willing to run your energy through this situation? So now you've got this group scenario and you've got this family scenario kind of outing the predator, you know, that could also be a potential here. Or there could be another situation here that I'm unaware of that it, but it mirrors that same kind of dynamic 
of like somebody here, and I mean it, whoever is doing this, they're very slick. They're very cunning. And um, it's really nasty. And they're very um, prideful, but they do feel threatened here in this situation, like by the person, like the negative person does feel threatened here by the positive person. They actually do. And this is somebody, okay, so what basically, what what is being said here? And this is hard for me. I'm going to say it from one, one direction, okay? But keep in mind, it's like both of these people, this is one of those scenarios where I think in this, in this case, we have projection here, but I would say this is narcissistic projection. You've got a narcissist occupying whichever space on their, on their field, on the field here, whichever role they're in, casting their disfluencies, their illusions, and they're intentionally projecting. Like they're intentionally doing this. They're doing this because uh, narcissistic projection is about delusion. They create a delusion about themselves. They create what that shared fantasy and they want to suck their victims into that shared fantasy, which a lot of times is like, they get to define people's roles and positions on the field, right? And they have that person completely believing that even though it's not true. And so they assign, they engage in sabotage, in intentional assigning traits, qualities, characteristics, motivations to people that don't actually exist there, that actually exist here in the narcissist, right? And they're trying to get between their target and whoever, anybody, literally anybody. Notice this in this card. Um, you have this like other person that's behind her and it looks like he's strung up here on a wheel. And I do feel like there's kind of some kind of, I don't know, there's control elements that are going on here. And she's got this like, she's trying to like look down. It's like a challenge. It's, she looks like she's protecting this. Like there's somebody here who is like very much trying to get in between somebody, try to call dibs, try to control someone's mind, trying to get them to ugh, like, and they don't care the effect that it has here on this person. Okay. So I'm going to say specifically like what it is that they're saying here, but keep in mind, both the positive person who is genuinely having this experience here with this negative person is saying the same thing. It's just real and it's just authentic. And then this negative person here is saying this about the positive person, but they're full of malarkey. They're just making it up and they're just, I think they would have identified the most powerful person, the person who, uh, stood the mo who had the most weight here over their target, who could have potentially outed them and been believed like the most, the truth teller, somebody, they would have targeted that person to lie about. Okay. So. I'm going to say this, but just know, like apply the negative traits to the negative person. And, um, okay. In this situation, I'm kind of going to talk like this is the negative person actually, but just keep in mind, like if it's the positive person that you're asking about, they're saying the same things, man, this is like confusing. This person, uh, the negative person banks on this too, this being really difficult to sort out because it'll buy them time at the very least where they get to like mooch off of somebody, drain somebody. Um, Okay. So like this negative person, you can probably tell, but I really don't like this person at all. They are very distrustworthy, untrustworthy, <laughs> distrustworthy. Good, good gracious. Um, <laughs> they are very untrustworthy. Okay. And, um, not only that, but they come from a very negative corrupted place inside themselves here in interacting with this situation and definitely with like the positively intended person here. And like I said, this person is like the land where truth has no meaning and no bearing and no sway because if you know the truth about this person it may as well not matter because this person may well know the truth about themselves i think they lack self-awareness for sure but even if they knew the truth about themselves that they were coming from a place of jealousy or that they were coming from a place of trying to control like dominate this person still would not change their behavior they would double down this is a nasty person okay so um also this person misrepresents themselves that's what it is. And that's also the fumes um, that roll off of them where the positive person can just, they have their card, the jig is up, okay? And this person, uh, the negative person, tries to pretend like they're the page of cups. That's really what I'm getting. They try to seem like they're sweet, that they're innocent, that they are naive, um, that they require assistance here in the situation. But that is a faux persona. That is a faux, um, that is not who they truly are right? So who they truly are is somebody who is worldly, somebody who is uh, experienced. This is a person who obviously, this is what's maddening. This person obviously has experience in the world. They are obviously not a damsel and maybe they're of an age or something where it's weird. 
like it's just weird um and this other person can just see it um obviously you're not obviously you're not like you're obviously very smart like that's yeah this person is they're genuinely smart and they are smart enough to position themselves in the exact angle in the exact light this person will don any costume any persona that will get them what they want and i'm hearing wolf in sheep's clothing so this person's a predator but they're trying to come off like a sheep you know um to like blend in to get themselves in a good position like here right so either this is the positive person like describing this here about the negative person accurately or this negative person is trying to paint the positive person wrongly in this light i do feel there's something about this is kind of obvious though you know it's got the smack of like somebody who has been married three times playing like the doe-eyed innocent i don't know what to expect in a marriage there's nothing wrong with being married three times i mean you know maybe that's not the path for you maybe that's something you want to like you know think about more but to say that you, do, you, you don't know what it is, is disingenuous and is weird. You know, it's like that kind of a, a situation. So there's something about that going on. Now, I feel like this person is saying that they were just like very like caught off guard or blindsided. There's somebody here who is like, what started the conversation here about the other person, about you, about whatever's going on, is there was somebody here that the, the, there's onlookers. Okay, so either their target, like if this is the negative person, their target saw the positive person, okay? And they were intrigued, they were enamored, they were actually like looking at the positive person as like, oh my gosh, like you're amazing. Like there was maybe sexual attraction here. Um, this is like very much wide-eyed, mouth on the floor kind of a thing, right? And the predator was like, oh no, they're about to take my person away from me right? Or this is the positive person describing the target as being like wide-eyed, mouth on the floor here about a predatory person. And they were like, oh no. And they started to feel like very protective here, but they didn't know what to do. They kind of felt helpless, but this person was completely enamored. They were completely wrapped up. Again, only one of these people is telling the truth about the situation here. Um, so that's what started it. And they're talking about feeling like defensive or um, protective. And all of this happened like very, very quickly. Now, um, it also could be like if this is, uh, if like, if it's just these two people here, then there could be onlookers where if this negative person has targeted the, the positive person, then, you know, say this is a work environment and all the coworkers start looking at the target with like positively, like, wow, you're interesting, you're unique, you're creative, um, you're different, you stand out, like, we like you. That's what is, that's what's going to trigger this person talking about the target in a negative light. Because the negative person wants to cause this tower moment. They want to interrupt this, they, well, the, yeah, the negative person wants to interrupt people viewing their target or the positive person who could, oh, this is so hard to talk about, isn't it, huh? Um, they want to disrupt that. They want to like set, like stop it. They don't want that person to be seen positively. So I feel like they kind of change their demeanor. And maybe it is like the tar, if, okay. So like if the target, so if we're looking from the negative person's point of view and what they're saying, right? If their target looks at this positively intended person, a person who is a truth teller and challenges the authority, the reach, the power, the narrative of the, the A-B-U-S-E-R in this situation, they notice it right away and they want to interrupt that. They want to stop that. So I think they immediately uh, start getting emotional, you know, or like when this person, they, and they're not really, they're putting on a show. Their body changes, their demeanor changes. They might try to seem like they are trying to mask their emotions, but they're not really, they're putting on a little show, right? Um, so this person gets like sad, all hunched over, nervous. Maybe they cry, maybe they're like shedding a tear, they're looking down, and then they give this kind of like sob story. Again, page of cups, I'm just so innocent, I'm just so naive, I just didn't see this person coming, I just don't understand why this or that, knowing full well, like this is a person who's clever. This person, they might be older than this person that they're saying is, that they need assistance from, you know? Um, they need guidance from this is I feel like there's something about this that is just like frustratingly maddeningly obvious that this person is like not a good person anyways um so yeah they like start you know twirling their hair it's like this kind of a body language here 
where they start talking about feeling like they're in a desert. They're alone, they're isolated. Um, things used to be so good here in the past. Um, but there's some sort of like strategy that's going on here. And now this person is like kind of away from them. Some, some kind of story here like that, where they're painting themselves as the victim when in actuality they're the persecutor. Um, now, if it goes the other way, this positive person, again, they are wanting to undermine the fantasy. They want to, this fantasy to crumble. They're basically just on the side of truth. They just want the truth to come out here about this person. They don't want to hurt them. They don't want, you know, they just want the lies to stop, the lies to crumble, the truth to come out here about this person. And so when they say that, man, this really caught me out of the blue, and it was like that this person changed overnight, you know, um, and they really do feel like isolated and alone where they feel like this person was strategic in coming in to like pick off their child or like whatever it was. They, they were very strategic here about that because this person had everything that they needed. They wanted to use this person, you know, as like some, as, as like it's grifting. It's grifter 101, like kind of like what we've got going on here. And um, they knew. So that's the other thing is like they knew that they were different from the beginning. They knew that there was something about them that was different. That's what, like, whoever is saying that. Now, if this is, like, the negative person, they're saying, I don't know what they're saying. Again, I feel like they could be saying similar things. You know, they, they knew that it was different. Um, somebody here, they're saying, yeah, it's like I was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but, like, I could kind of sense that something was off. Like, they're both saying that, but from, like, their very different perspectives here. Um... Now, I just feel like whoever is truly the A-B-U-S-E-R, that is the person who has uh, induced a desert here for their target. They, um, or for the positive person, right? Because again, like the positive person and the target, that could be you, that could be one person here, if it's just these two. But if there's like a third party that's a target, then the positive person and, and their target got taken away from the positive person who just loves them and wants them, then that they got put in this desert kind of a situation um, where they're saying that they were alone and that they were sad and that they needed help and that they um, were just overlooked. And for some of you, this is really sad because this is what's actually happened where somebody here just like a whole family was like wrecked here by like an abuser. But for other people, this is like somebody getting their just desserts. They built this. This is just the, the consequences of treating people badly and scheming around. But they can't let people, this for this negative person, right? They can't let people see their true colors. So they have to lie. They have to facade manage. They have to put on these little emotional performances, these little emotional song and dances, um, blaming somebody who had a really positive influence here, who actually does care about their target, um, who wants what's best for them. They're trying to paint them in a negative light to avoid their own personal accountability or responsibility here in the situation. So that's what's going on. That's what's being said, right? There, there's this description of, man, somebody here was just, um, I will say this though, if it's like, Say this is someone who succeeded in severing somebody from their family and this person's negatively intentioned, right? But then there's another person that like comes in and they can tell that their target likes this person, takes them seriously, thinks that they're different, is interested, maybe even sexually attracted here to this person. The negative person can see that, will start to get defensive. Now, they may say that if it serves their agenda, but they also could just start spinning tales and lies here about this other person and about who they are to try to knock the positive light that their target sees them in, in order to keep them isolated, in order to keep them bound, in order to keep them sucked in to their shared fantasy. That's what's going on here. Um, that's what's going on here. And things have really been upended. And this is making me really sad. So let's get some messages here. Well, let's do this like positive person here first. You have changed me. Hmm. Interesting. For some, I'm hearing there was a loss of innocence, like from this positive person. I find you interesting. I've been having regrets. Um, I kind of think that some of these regrets, are, regrets could be unfounded, though, where it's like this person was kind of made to hold the bag, like this positive person, right? Could have been, especially if there's like a third 
Target, they could have been made to hold the bag here to admit that they did things that they didn't do or to apologize for things that they didn't do. You know, they have to, uh, they have to accept the false identity that this negative person wants to paint them as and then get mirrored that like they're that terrible person when they're not. That's what they were asked to do. And some of these people, I think they just couldn't do it, obviously. Because if you're a proud person, if you're an integral person, you know, it's like, I make my mistakes, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to allow myself to get so treated, to get thusly treated. No one should have to do that. But sometimes I think they, especially when they're alone, um, they think maybe I should have just, maybe I should have just, you know. Um, some of these people could be falling in love. Could have met somebody. I'm scared of commitment. I'm scared of commitment, but I'm thinking for forever. But that could have something to do with the situation because if you still have a negative person around or if you are this negative person, then they don't want to commit to anything with you. Even if you, this is a family dynamic and you kind of are duty bound to be around this person, it's like they're not, they don't want to make you any promises if to, the, if to you if you're the negative person or if you are associated with this negative person because it's just... Um, Anything that you kind of give somebody like that, they can twist it, you know, and they can make it out. Um, I'm scared you're moving on. Yeah, this is, this is a hard reading. I hope this is, um, like, I, it's a hard reading to understand. I hope you guys are, like, following me here. But, okay, this negative person, let's get messages from them. And I'm seeing, um, if you let me, I'll take care of you. I feel stuck. Yeah, but this per that's this person. Oh, I don't like this person. They're playing like the sob story. I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. This person is a whiner. I don't do whiners well. I'm sorry. It's Maybe it's a character flaw. I just don't because I'm sort of just a like, it doesn't matter if this isn't my situation. I'm just, I'm triggered. I don't know. I'm just, I don't like this person. What are they saying? I feel like they're emoting. I'm hearing Rihanna, you put on quite a show, really had me going, but it's over now. Go on and take a bow. I mean, that's who this person is. Reach out to me, please. I've never met anyone like you before. So maybe you have caught on to this person. Maybe you've left this person. They want you to reach out to them. So they could be saying like, um, maybe they're saying that this positive person got in between you and them. They could be saying that you're having an affair like on them, if this is a sexual thing. If it's not, they could still be saying, oh, somebody got a hold of you and now you left them and like it was, you know, you left them for this other person or for your own freedom because you bought into some like, they're calling somebody else the charlatan. You know, they're saying somebody else was strategic. Well, they infiltrated your friend group in order to pull you away from them. This person has no accountability to the fact that they're a nightmare to deal with and that it's obvious, especially if you get around a person who's genuinely sweet, genuinely pure hearted and pure intentioned. Again, not that they don't do bad things sometimes, not that they don't mess up sometimes, but when you get them around, when you compare and contrast the two right next to each other, it is sort of obvious. Because I do feel like whoever gets tricked here, it's almost like they had to want to trick themselves, kind of, you know? You're a great friend. I want more than what we have. Interesting. This person seems like they are trying to move you along, trying to, maybe this is a Hoover stage. Never met anyone like you anymore. Or I... I'm sorry, I'm getting tired. I never met anyone like you before. I'm still healing. I ran away. I just don't like this person for this reading. Maybe you're over this relationship. Hopefully, we can only hope. Um, let's just get some advice here. How can, if you are stuck and if you're trying to tell these two people apart, I just saw the martyr card. Somebody here is addicted to self-pity and somebody here learns the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause. Transcendent means you transcend. You overcome it, you move, like you're making progress. You don't just sit in the stink. You don't just sit in the mud. It serves this like negative person's agenda to be like a perpetual victim. Um, okay, companion. I feel like there's a codependent kind of relationship, right? So somebody here, betrayal by misusing confidences. Somebody here is totally fine misusing confidences, I suppose. Um, and there's a loss of personal identity in the relationship. This is one of those relationships where they all they, they believe the same things about each other. They like... Not, not even about each other. It's like they just, they're like the Borg. They have like one mindset and they kind of like check in with each other about like, do we think about this? They're not, there's not allowed to be like, I'm not saying that you don't have a united front, but like, you know, it's just, you're allowed to disagree. 
You know, it's like, well, we need to appear united on this. You know, um, we need to have the same exact opinion. You can be united and love someone and have their back and be like, I just disagree with you. Okay, so how can we how can we do this where we're accommodating the nuance in a situation, right? And somebody else here is loyal, tena they have tenacity, and they are unselfish. Um, how else can pile number three... I just saw the mediator card. So somebody here is, again, they're mediating. They're saying things with an ulterior motive. They stand to gain something here in the situation. And I'm hearing you know it and everybody knows it. So why then? <laughs> I'm like, why then? Um, okay, I just saw the father card. And the king. Um Okay, I think some of you are trying to have your cake and eat it too a little bit. Maybe you have like roles or responsibilities. You always thought, you always foresaw yourself like, you know, um, being in a type of situation that you have to say goodbye to now in order to model healthy behaviors for any children you may have here because otherwise they're going to think I get in an unhealthy dynamic and I just stick there because I want a label, you know, that's not something good. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's like a, a fight, I think, within you. How else? I keep hearing that like, but it's over now. Go on and take a bow. Okay, slave energy. Surrendering your power of choice to the divine with complete trust. Um, and the this other person, this negative person, giving your willpower to an external authority out of fear of making your own choices. I feel like this is the type of person that is an adult, but they're for some reason never responsible for their own choices. Like other adults are responsible for their outcomes, you know, when things don't go their way. They don't just like, all right, that I that I messed that up. So I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the reins and I'm gonna pull them over here. I'm gonna try this next thing, this next time. I'm gonna get right back up. That kind of speaks to that tenacity here in another person that's the healthy person. You know, okay, like sometimes things don't work out. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best. This is a person who just wants to sit in their stink and make it seem like Life is happening to them. That is, I'm so sorry, that is so unattractive. That is just so unattractive, man or woman, because I feel like maybe this could be, I don't know, I don't know. I'm I'm tired. I'm starting to get like really upset. And then we got the prostitute energy at the bottom of the deck. Light attribute accentuates the challenge of surviving without negotiating the power of your spirit. And then the shadow attribute places material considerations above self-empowerment. I mean, yeah, I think that's what this is. This person, that's what this, like, it's kind of obvious, I think, to the people around that, Whoever this target is, is everything. Like it is everything, you know, they are everything. Either, you know, if, if you're competitors with this person in a work environment, you have everything, you're on the, the verge of your ascent and this person is just um, angry. So they're trying to defame you. They're trying to lie about you, you know? But if, this, if there's a third party here that you both have some kind of connection to, it's obvious that the third party has something, everything that the, the grifter here, the negative person requires for themselves as an obvious thing that should be accounted for. Um, so yeah, that's what I am. That's what I'm getting as I'm getting here. I'm so tired. I'm so exhausted. I'm so hungry. I'm so crabby. <laughs> and I feel like maybe that's how you're feeling here in this situation. Just like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is so, um, maddening. This is infuriating here. And I do think some of you are realizing that you've been taken in here by someone who's tried to distort your vision about someone uh, or about a group, like about a family, about, I don't know. And keep in mind, it can go either way. It can go either way. It's just that whoever is this negative influence, they're just something else, man. They really are. So um, that's what I have for you guys, pile number three. If that resonated with you, please like, comment, and subscribe um, to my channel. I also have a Patreon. If you like my reading style and you want to support me, it's $5 a month. We do two exclusive readings over there. We vote on the topics. It's a pretty cool community. Um, and yeah. Um, okay, bye. <laughs>